Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Pokemon Let's Go Any Percent NMS tournament uh, first race here with uh, a wonderful first race. We've got the number one seed Echi against the number 22 seed Quo and the number 29 seed Zeon. Uh, I'm going to be one of your commentators today, Etiquette. And with me are two other great commentators if they want to introduce themselves. Hello, everyone. I'm T-Pat, uh, also here uh, with the, uh, you know, I like to be modest, you know, when it comes to commentary, but I just want to say, like, we've got a world record commentary crew for you here because it's not just etiquette, not just myself, but we also have Joker. Hello. Hello. You should have introduced me as former Ditch Bill world record holder, Bob Joker. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we got we got the catchable records covered on commentary, but of course we got uh, the any percent and no mount skip record holder and Etchy uh, on the race today. So it should be a really fun day. Yeah, the race is gonna be race is gonna be really good. Um, kicking off this awesome tournament that we've got put together, uh, we are a few seconds out from the actual race start. Um, so. This will be exciting. Uh, and we also have we have two racers on Pikachu and one on Eevee. Uh, Echi and Quo are going to be both on Pikachu, while Zeon is going to be repping Eevee. Um, so it should be a good time. All right. They should be off because we are uh, looking over on the, uh, the race time screen. And once we got their feet up, they should be all set and going in just a second here. And there they are. Yeah, so as you mentioned, we got two Pika players and one Eevee player today. And one of the first things that I thought was really interesting about how uh, this tournament is going to go is that not everybody is going to match just what their PB is based on whether they're going to choose uh, the Pika version or the Eevee version. I think most notably, of course, we have Echi, who has not just the record for both, uh, both versions, but it's faster time for no mount skips is on Eevee, but he's been pretty adamant about picking the Pika version for the race. And we might see this later on in the tournament where New Amber has had kind of the opposite going on. Uh, her PB was in Pika for a while, and I think it might still be, or it's within a second now, uh, but she had been practicing a lot on the Eevee side of things. Uh, both games, of course, are like very close in times no matter what. so. I'm sure a lot of players are just going to choose whatever they are most comfortable with. Absolutely, yeah. The the two games are uh, very, very comparable, so um, it really does come down to comfort at, at some point. I think one of the things we should mention about this tournament is that one of like the few rules or add-ons that we have for these races is that uh, all of our players will check their stats and check their natures of their Eevee and Pikas respectively. And if they don't like what they got, if they don't like the nature that they rolled, uh, they will be allowed to use a backup save of a neutral nature. So for example, if one of our players gets a bold nature and that would go for either Pikachu or Eevee and they don't want to run the minus attack or the unrunnable nature, uh, it is allowed that they have a neutral nature specifically. And that's just so that um, no one's like prepping too heavy to get like a perfect natured Pikachu like before the race. We want to make sure that it's kind of evened out uh, and smooth and at least runnable for anybody that doesn't want to go through the unrunnability of the starters. Um, but if you see them load up a different save, uh, they can do that just after they get to the uh, lab and they look at their nature. Um, the only thing that we have to make sure is that they don't switch their uh, versions in the middle. So if they're on Pika, their backup save is going to be on Pika and vice versa. Yeah, and, and it is also worth mentioning, uh, you do not have to check your nature. If you want to take whatever um, starter you get, you absolutely can do that. Um, it's just if you do want to load the backup save, it does require you to be in the lab, which is just a few minutes before... Uh, you would actually get to see your stats via level up, which is how a lot of, especially Pika runners, uh, will typically do attempts. So we'll see what happens there. Um, so right here on the screen, you're seeing the first catch of the run. Um, as you can see underneath Xeon's uh, game feed, there is a catch tracker. 
Uh, this run is a pretty unique Pokemon run in that it not only requires you to beat the game, uh, well, in order to beat the game, you have to catch a lot of Pokemon. So you have to fill your decks with 50 unique entries. Um, and so that's going to be the main focus of kind of like the first two hours of the run. Um, and uh, so you'll be able to see what all of the runners have planned as well as what they have caught. Uh, and it will be sort of rotating through the different racers. Um, big shout outs to Spider C for putting this together. Um, this is one of the, the neatest bits of tech that we have for the for the tournament this year. Yeah, it's gonna be fun to be able to to keep track, especially on like the commentator side, because when you got three different feeds, I mean, sometimes it's hard enough just looking at your own game and knowing, you know, how do I get to fifty Pokemon? So to see three different ones, to have that uh, that interactive catch tracker is going to be uh, pretty huge yeah catching all these pokemon is what makes the run uh, fun and interesting um to watch and do because uh, unlike like the more traditional pokemon games uh you just kind of pick like a few pokemon and kind of blitz through um but this one you get to see a lot of stuff uh that's different from normal pokemon speak speaking of blitzing through etchy did not check his pikachu's nature so I think he's just gonna go blitz. Yeah, well, Pikachu, um, the only ones you don't want for natures is like Maya's attack and Maya's special attack, but uh, if you get AVs or something, um, it, it doesn't really waste too much time. Um, like the attack is mostly up until Rock Tunnel, uh, and mm -hmm. then you're fine. And then special attack is really just, you kind of just guarantee four turns for the Jesse and James fights later in Hideout in Pokemon Tower. Yeah, and it looks like Quo's Pikachu was a Rash nature, Rash being one of the best natures um, that you can get. Uh, Rash is plus special attack minus special defense. Uh, so that is that is definitely a, a really good nature to get. Um, didn't look like Zeon checked uh, for his nature, so uh, we might be having to figure that one out on the first level up. Um, which, funny enough, the first level up is actually going to be different between the two games um, without any catch experience. Uh, Pikachu will level up one fight earlier because uh, your rival gives you literally one more experience uh, if you're running on Pikachu. So uh, we'll have to wait until probably Viridian Forest to sort of see what kind of EV Zeon has, but that's okay. Uh, good catch by um, some of our chatters that on the Pikachu version, you can actually tell if you have a neutral nature just based on the CP of the catch. Because if it has 27 CP, you know for sure that Pikachu has a neutral nature. So it sounds like Echi may have used that knowledge to be able to say, hey, I don't even have to check the stats here. I know I have a neutral. Yeah. Oh, when was that discovered? I did not know that. There was I don't know when it was discovered. Yeah. Right. People have been talking but, about it a lot recently. <laughs> and it's not possible in uh it's not possible for Eevee because just how the uh the stats are divvied up. It's CP is just a, a funny funny little stat. It feels very, you know, whose line is it anyways, where you know where the where the numbers are all made up and stats don't matter. <laughs> That's what the CP kind of feels like. Um it's just some weird formula that adds up all of your stats together, multiplies it by your level. And there's like another modifier that's involved. Um, but just based on how it shakes out, you can just tell on the Pika side that 27 CP is neutral. And I think 26 is all others, I think. Um, um, I believe 26 is means that it is definitely not neutral. 27 means it could be neutral. It could be something else. Um, but there's just a lot of overlap there. Um, all right, so here we've got the first rival battle. Um, this is going to be a small difference between the two games. Obviously, uh, you're using different Pokemon between the two games. Uh, Pikachu typically has a slower fight here, um, being generally a three or a four turn, where Eevee can be a two turn if you've got plus attack um, or you know potentially uh, you know three turns or four turns if you get really unlucky with the growls. So um, or if you get paired seven turns in a row. Or if you do get paralyzed seven turns in a row, that is a thing, yes. Yeah. Uh, the fastest, I think the fastest fight for Pikachu is actually the Eevee killing you. 
Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Three turns. It's so happened to be like the fight four just or five ends times. and you don't get the uh, like the ending quote unquote cutscene. Yeah, and the the experience in Pikachu doesn't matter as much. One of the things um, about this game that is definitely a bit unique uh, compared to other Pokemon speedruns is the amount of experience you get for trainer battles is like really small compared to the amount of experience that you get for uh, catches. So um, a lot of these trainer battles you're going to notice here on Edgy's screen, you know, 12 experience for that Rattata. That's not a whole lot. Um, does get him to level six, and it looks like is that plus attack? Or did you gain an AP there? Uh, I see 23 I 17, speed. 17 attack, uh, 15 special, and 21 speed is, I okay. believe, what I saw. Okay. I wasn't... six. Okay. I'm, I'm not as familiar. Well, I, know, I, know Klo, I know Klo is a neutral attack because it was 16. That's all I saw. Yeah, I was, he had 16, 17, 21. So it looks like Etchies is a little higher. He may have gotten that AV in that attack stat. Yeah, that's... <laughs> This is going to be a uh, explanation that you're going to hear a million times over the course of the tournament. Uh, AVs. So uh, this Pokemon game does not have the normal stat system. Uh, so the whole EVs um, that you gain as you KO Pokemon in other Pokemon games does not exist in this game. Instead, it's replaced with AVs, standing for Awakening Values. Um, and basically, they call them Go Power. Yeah, they're the Go Power. Sorry. Um, and basically the way that they work in terms of the speed run is um, as you level up, you will gain an AV and a random stat. Um, what stat it goes to uh, is kind of dependent on what your Pokemon is. Uh, it is random, uh, but there are some biases. Uh, we have the nature of the Pokemon. Uh, so, for example, Quo's Pikachu here is a rash nature, uh, meaning it's plus special attack minus special defense. So special attack is going to get a little bit of a bias. And special defense is going to get a little bit of a negative bias. So it's you're probably not going to see any AVs go to your special defense. Um, and then there's also a bias toward your characteristic stat. Uh, and so that's something that you don't actually see unless you check your stats. So we have no idea what Echi's characteristic is. Um, and we will never learn it uh, just through the normal speed run. Um, but that'll also happen there. So. Uh, some runners will opt to track their AVs um, because one of the other nice things about AVs are uh, you will gain them in a 10 level cycle. Uh, so the AV that you gain at level 6 is going to be the same as the AV you gain at level 16 uh, and then 26. And so you can really easily predict your stats later on if you know exactly what AVs you've got. Uh, one of the problems with that is you don't actually see your stats on every level up. So you're not actually going to see where your AVs have gone, and you're gonna kinda have to do a little bit of math to figure that out. Uh, so some runners don't do it, some runners do. Uh, I personally like doing it just because I like to to have that information, um, but you definitely don't have to um, at a top also, level. I also feel like it's more, more. Uh, it's better to do it for EV. Like, I don't think Pikachu needs yeah. it as much. Exactly. Um, um, as you right. can see, in the meantime, he's... we saw Echi catch a Caterpie. He actually ran into one before the lure, ended up being level five, so that's not going to hurt him too much. But it probably just spawned immediately in front of him. But Quo is the first one to get to the lure. Uh, again, you're going to see a lot of lures. Probably hear this explanation a lot. Lures will influence not only the rate of spawn in any given route, but it will force all spawns to be at their maximum level plus one for the route. And that means for the forest, they'll catch everything at level 7. So that's why trying to catch, uh, like, a Caterpie or a Weedle before the lure isn't optimal, uh, as we saw. Ooh, we got a, we got a, we got a Bulbasaur on the screen. It's on Etchy's screen already. All right, that's awesome. Oh. So every area in the game, um, barring, like, two, has what's called a special spawn or a rare spawn, you might hear it called. Um, basically, they are spawns that do not appear in the encounter table. Um, but instead will sort of randomly show up um, and you can influence when they show up based on your catch chain. Uh, it's another mechanic that you're not really going to see in this category. Um, but suffice to say, these rare spawns are a lot of times quite good um, and they are about a 0.5% chance to show up. So Bulbasaur is the rare spawn here in Viridian Forest. Um, if you've ever seen a run and you've seen a Chansey somewhere, Chansey is the rare spawn, like, almost everywhere else in the game. Um, oh, it looks like Xeon's having some trouble with their controller. 
don't love to see that. Uh, one of the things about this game is you do have to play with your Joy-Cons, um, and there are motion controls involved, so... I have a bit of an issue here. Yeah, as you can see, these are overworld spawns. This is the first Pokemon game to have um, spawns like this. It's really nice. Uh, random encounters are not as fun. Yeah, until imagine... they spawn right on top of you. I kind of had a kind of had a couple issues today in my run, but uh, we'll, we'll put we'll put that behind me. I definitely didn't lose 301 pace to that or anything. <laughs> But yeah, looks like looks like Etchy is just kind of doing through a couple uh, evolution screens. Did catch that Bulbasaur, no problems. Just probably really clean. Um, looking at Quo screen, looks like they were um, trying to just get the right spawn. Um, one of the one of the things I was noticing on his screen is that he was running a lot back and forth. Um, for beginner runners, sometimes that can be really hasty because the lures and repels are step based, not time based. So if you do just run around like in circles, your lure will run out faster. And hopefully he's gonna get all of his catches in before that lure runs out, um, even with a lot of the extra steps uh, that we're seeing him taking. So you're gonna see like little subtle things like that can make the difference between top runners. And it's not just world record level, but a lot of our pot one runners will be able to subtly make those um, distinctions where it's like, hey, nothing's on my screen right now that I want to catch. I'm just going to stand right here to not waste the rest of those lure steps. Yeah, and as you can see on some Pokemon, uh, some are glowing uh, red or blue. Um, that means they are bigger or smaller. Um, and the size will give extra experience when you catch them. Uh, you get bonus experience for catching with two controllers. Um, you've probably seen two balls and two trainers, and you're like, what is going on? We can call in a second uh, second player with our second Joy-Con, um, and doing synchronized catches will give us more experience. Catching it on the first ball will give us more experience. And then you have excellent, good, nice, and nothing, and you get multipliers based on when you catch them. Uh, the first catch of the game, actually, you just you want great. Uh, that's the fastest. Um, you need to caught it the fastest instead of excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Quo is out of the forest. Does have all of his catches. He's a little bit behind on experience. Uh, looks like it's like just good enough. Level nine on the Oddish. Level nine on the Pika. Uh, Etchy, you're gonna notice he's gonna have more catches as well as more experience right now. So. Uh, you will see that ebb and flow throughout all of the races is that sometimes if you're behind on catches you better be ahead on you know the plot and the storyline yeah and something etchy's doing here um is gonna be catching rattata so we didn't really talk about it too much um but the what you catch and where you catch it is super important in this game uh you kind of have to balance do i want experience do i want catches for catch count purposes um, do I want to catch because I can evolve it in a single level? Uh, the bugs are really nice because after three levels, they will evolve twice. Uh, so you can essentially get six Pokemon for two catches, uh, which is really nice. Um, so Etchy there was picking up the uh, Rattata for a couple of reasons. Uh, gives some nice early experience on Pikachu, um, which is going to be the main for for really like the first hour of the run. Uh, but it also gives a little bit more experience to that Oddish. Uh, so something you'll see down on Quo's screen right now is we're actually using Oddish in Pikachu version for Brock. Um, and this fight, if you are only level 7, uh, which is the standard level that you get in uh, if you catch it in Viridian Forest, if you're only level 7, then you're going to uh, have a bit of a harder time against the Onix. Uh, but by catching that Rattata and um, it looks like this Pidgey here for Etchy, uh, getting that Oddish up past level 7 to at least level 8. Uh, this Pidgey is glowing, so it's probably going to gain another couple levels to level 9. Or 10, actually. Um, should make that fight a lot better for Edgy. And 10 guarantees the range. Yes. Onyx. Yeah, in Pikachu, or uh, in Eevee... Two... Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, in Eevee, uh, we don't have Oddish. Um, so we do have to get our Eevee up to level 10 to learn Double Kick. Uh, and it's a bit of a slower fight, um, but Eevee has some other benefits that, like, it, it, this is like one fight for Pikachu, and then there's going to be fights that go back and forth throughout the entire race. 
So Echi has an incredibly high catch count right now after both the Rattata and Pidgey catches on Route 2. He's up to 10 Pokemon registered before he's even gotten to Pewter City, which is very, very high. The average is probably around 7. Uh, you know, you catch your Bugs, you catch your Oddish, you've got Pikachu, and maybe like one other catch. Uh, so all the way up to 10 is very, very high. Uh, for Echi, and hopefully he'll be able to um, use that lead in terms of the catch count in order to really uh, speed up some of his later games, because then you have to catch fewer things on some later routes. Plus, you have a lot of your overhead, which is a kind of a catch-all term um, for, like, little bits of slow time. Like, overhead being, like, extra levels, because they all happen one at a time. A lot of that's already finished on things like Beedrill that's already evolved. So in his next menuing, he's already going to deposit Beedrill, and it has no chance to gain an extra unnecessary level. Um, so while it looks like he's a whole gym behind, uh, he is several Pokemon and levels uh, ahead of Quo. But Quo isn't doing too bad. I mean, his forest actually went pretty smoothly, just caught all the things that he needed to catch, didn't really do anything extra right now. Yeah, uh, he's uh, entering gonna... the first shop of the game and looks like a little bit of a safety strat, selling a couple extra Pokeballs to get a few extra Great Balls. Yeah, one of the things that you're going to see every runner do um, is, or pretty much every runner do, is immediately switch um, after this shop to using Great Balls. Um, so the way that the catch formula works, um, it's both based on uh, what ball you're using, uh, and it actually does matter which ball you're using for both controllers. Uh, that's something that we learned recently. Thank you, Anubis. Yeah, that's... Yeah. <laughs> um, but it also matters what level, the, or not necessarily what level the Pokemon is, but what their CP value is. So the CP is what we were talking about earlier. Uh, it stands for combat points, uh, and it's basically some formula that uses the Pokemon's actual stat values. And so as a Pokemon goes up in level, its stats will also go up. Um, so higher level Pokemon are just inherently harder to catch. That's actually something that's not a thing in other Pokemon games. Um, so it's kind of unique here. And so even if we're going to be catching, you know, some Pokemon, um, you know, later on, like you could catch an Oddish or a Bellsprout later, but you'd want to use a Great Ball over a Pokeball just because it's going to be a higher level. Um, and so you're going to see us immediately switch to, to Great Balls once we get into Mount Moon. Um, and then pretty much use Great Balls for the majority of the run up until like the final catches that we do. Yeah, the catch, the finding out the second uh, Pokeball's influenced really helps for cat. Not as, it still helps for this one, but it helps more for um, the catch ball categories in this game. It helps a lot. <laughs> Yeah, when we first found that out, I think the catch em all categories we were a lot more excited about. Because uh, if I remember correctly, Joker, your best time was a 5.15 or so uh, before the catch route was, or like the catch information was discovered. Uh, and now like all of us improved big time. I mean, Etiquette's got a 5.05, but he did kind of cheat and skip some trainers in Victory <laughs> Road, which is not allowed in this tournament. It is not allowed in this tournament. I, it is not allowed in this tournament. <laughs> I so wish we didn't know about it and someone just did it in this tournament. And we all would have been like, the commentators would have been like freaking out. Oh, Ooh, there goes that. Oh. That Makey, oh. that happened to me. It's tragic. You can't. You can't, oh, so there are spinners in this game um, that like rotate. I guess they're more like rotating or whatever. Um, as soon as they start moving, you can pass them because their their view cone or whatever disappears, unlike some other games. Um, so you can see some very wonky passes where it looks like uh, the trainer is looking at the player, but because they just started turning, um, they won't get seen. Yeah, so, yeah trainer vision. Really I was just going to say trainer vision is something you'll want to keep an eye on. Uh, no pun intended for this run <laughs> there is there are some shenanigans we can pull yeah so, i bet they, you uh, no, one, no one will show off knock skip though so. <laughs> probably not <laughs> uh, i did knock skip today uh etchy has been no doing knock skip a lot so i won yeah maybe well uh but yeah that manky was just just brutal I, we were just mentioning before the uh before the run that etchy had basically gotten a manky like right where he was now like before those trainers so that Mankey just ran up the ledge and passed the trainer to meet him like a couple days ago. Um, but it's really unfortunate when you're already like in that patch of grass and it just r runs away and it runs through trainer vision. It's like, well, I, I can't do that either. 
Um, yeah. So yeah, that was really unfortunate for Quo that the Mankey, a really great bonus spawn, it's only 5% chance on Route 3 and Route 4. Um, but Quo's got a pretty, I mean, he did get Sand True, so that's a nice little bonus in his back pocket to just help with that catch route just a little bit more. At least didn't get wrapped. Wrapped is the worst move to see here. Not that it's not that he lose like that much time, but yeah. Yeah. So um, Oddish is going to continue to be used for um, a couple fights. Actually, uh, it's it's not really all that useful on that uh, Bell Sprout fight. Uh, Pikachu could also two shot it, um, but where it really shines is against the next fight, uh, which is a Sandshrew, and the Sandshrew is. Quite a trolley Pokemon. It's got Poison Sting, which can poison you if you don't one-shot. Um, it also has Sand Attack, so both of those are pretty bad to see. Uh, but because uh, in Pikachu version, you have an Oddish, and Oddish is already in the front because of the Brock fight, um, you can just go right into this fight and pretty uh, pretty handily take care of it. Um, and then... It doesn't cost that much as a detour in terms of movement just to go... Yeah, because the we do want to go down this points. ladder. Yeah, we want to go down this ladder to the basement. Um, there are two ways, or there are three ways to the basement. One of them is the way out of Mount Moon. Um, and the other two go to sort of dead end rooms. Uh, but we're going to intentionally go to one of those dead end rooms here because uh, there are quite a few Pokemon that we can catch uh, that would be very useful. And also a couple of really useful items, namely a Moonstone, uh, potentially two Moonstones, and a Nugget. A uh, Nugget being really good for selling. So unfortunately, yeah, Quo's not going to get Sand, Sand screen Slash. For the, oh, I was going to say, keep an eye on Echi's screen for the possibility of two Moonstones. When the uh, when the date rolls over, any hidden items usually have about a 50% chance of respawning. So the Moonstone is a hidden item in the middle of the room. Uh, you're going to see it on Quo's screen in just a moment here. And as the date rolls over past midnight, it'll have a chance to respawn. It does look like Echi was the only one to set their date and time beforehand for that double moonstone trick. Uh, the other two runners, I believe, were just uh, waiting on the start screen uh, without the need to do that. Although if Echi did set the normal time, um, I don't think he's going to be there in time for the double moonstone. Typically, the double moonstone is going to happen around 25 minutes. Um, and so he looks like he's just a little bit late for that. Which makes sense given his extremely Already high having 12 balance. Pokemon, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the more the more catches you have early, usually the later you're going to be to that room. Um, so to anybody that is getting into this game and doing the run, uh, at a high level, most runners will either set their date and time to 11.33 or 11.34 p.m. Uh, and Echi is one that likes to set 1134. So when you um, take into account the minute it takes to get into the game, that usually means that 25 minute mark is when the in-game time hits midnight and he didn't even enter the room until almost 26. So probably won't get that double moonstone, but at least got oh. one that's guaranteed. Ooh, we got a chance already on full oh. screen. <laughs> Oh, this is huge. Okay, so Chansey is one of those 0.5% spawns that I was talking about earlier. Um, and Chansey is one of the best ones to see, especially here in Mount Moon, uh, because not it grading. is not double grading, um, but it is a huge experience boost if you can get it caught. Um, so let's see. Ooh, three shake and it brought out. If Cool can remember to switch the second controller to Great Ball, that's going to help the catch chance immensely. Uh, and it's something like that that's really helped the run. A lot of these, like, catches that used to be like, oh, these aren't great catches, are now actually quite reasonable, like that right. chance. And it does get in second ball. You know what? That's, yeah, that's fine. That's, worth. that's a good thousand experience. And you're going to see that's four, almost five levels on all of this Pokemon. Yeah, one of, the, one of the key experience thresholds that you're trying to hit um, here in Mount Moon is you want to be level 15 exiting Mount Moon. Uh, because uh, we didn't mention it for Brock's gym, but every gym has a requirement to enter it. Uh, Brock's gym requires you to have a grass or a water type Pokemon. Fun fact, there are no water type Pokemon before Brock. Nice um, design, Game Freak. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and Misty's gym requirement is to have a level 15 Pokemon. Um, and for a couple well, of different reasons... Did I see Chansey on Etchy's screen too? I think I did. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, for a couple of reasons, doing Misty before Nugget Bridge is better. 
Um, so typically runners will want to be level 15 when they exit Mount Moon. Uh, if you're not 15 exiting Mount Moon, it's fine. You can do Nugget Bridge first, um, but it is just a little bit slower. So you, you really want to try to hit that 15 threshold. So um, yeah, uh, at Mount Moon, Chansey, uh, two controller, double grades, excellent with Raz is a 74.49% chance to catch. Um, which is so, reasonable. It's it's absolutely reasonable yeah. to go for knowing the benefits. But yeah, what you're going to oh, see is see? Chansey. If you do have, Sorry. Yep, Chansey's on the screen. So Etchy is going to make sure to deposit everything that doesn't need experience. I think he should have gone for Parasect. He should have yeah. gone for <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if it doesn't need experience, it's going to go in the box so he can minimize the number of extra level ups here. And that's one of the big differences that we've discovered. Because again, famous clip from etiquette here you know this is why you don't catch chancy and you get like you know 50 levels across your six pokemon so to minimize the kind of garbage levels and just get the necessary Oof. ones it's going to be interesting what was that homing uh, yeah that was a, a little bit of a little motion bit of a controls are a thing bro <laughs> side so, throws it it well, still got gets it. in though it still get in uh, and it might actually like it's probably just going to limit, you know, the overwhelming experience. So he gets 800 experience instead of a thousand. Okay, the, the which Ivysaur is probably... with no extra levels. All right. Do, Rich uh, get richer. Do yeah, most... he's, probably, he's probably saying technically optimal. Do, <laughs> right most, um, do most Pikachu runners evolve Oddish now? Yes. Yes. Um, and a lot of Eevee runners actually evolve Bellsprout now, too. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, because while Bell while Bellsprout is not as well, it's not useful at all in terms of the fights. Um, the usefulness is that you usually have that second controller available uh, for all of your other catches, particularly on Route Six as well as Route Ten. Otherwise, you would most likely have to catch something one controller, uh, which is a significant reduction in catch rate. Which is why almost at any given point, if you can two controller catch something, you're gonna two controller catch something because it is just that valuable. Um, so that's that was the use of Bellsprout being in the party. Wow, Etchy almost hit that, uh, the Hiker Spinner. I have not seen him spin that fast in a long while. Oh, oh there's so a Club Mabel on Z and Zeon's oh, screen. Oh my God. Any percent, or it's time to do AOP. <laughs> yeah, and he's gonna do the same thing where he's gonna deposit all the extra Pokemon in his party uh, to be able to get that uh, not wasteful experience. And Clefable, while not as much as Chansey, can still be a big time uh, EXP. Oh, I think he's trying to dodge all these Zubats. Or is he not going know. for it at all? Not going for it. Okay. It. You know That's, what? I respect that. It's fine. Um, double grades, excellent. Raz, two controllers, 68.73%. So, you know, that's decent, but it's not like... Yeah, it's actually lower than Chansey, funny enough. Yeah. Which isn't uh, the you saw him do a pretty a, a good beginner strat, which is to reset that room just by going up and then back down the ladder. You can get rid of the spawns, most of the Zubats, and then try to get something that you're looking for. Um, definitely a very good beginner idea that if you don't have your Geodude, your Paris, and your Clefairy, to make sure that you go back in that room. Uh, actually getting a classic left hallway spawn. Is he going to catch this? Oh, he is just going to yeah. go for oh, it. Oh, nice. And missed on a great ball. Goes for it again. The This little corridor is notorious for just having these spawns that will spawn right in front of you or right on top of you. Uh, him not wanting to take a you know an extra encounter per se, just decided to go for that Zubat. But that does mean he won't get Golbat later unless he wants to outright catch the Golbat. Would it recommend? <laughs> I doubt we will see him go for it. I'm sure he's, say, he's saying... Hey, I got it's a bunch of extra catches. It's okay. already unmarked on the tracker. Oh, uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, 17 catches for Echi right now before exiting Mount Moon. And incredibly high. So he's still. Echi over here doing a Professor Oak challenge. Jesus. Yeah, just about. <laughs> that should be the next tournament. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Whereas on the he's other so end. Quo actually has a very low catch count. Uh, right now we're seeing only 10 Pokemon marked uh, through Mount Moon for Quo. All 
All right. Team Helix or Team Dome? Uh, I will. Okay, so this is a this is a funny. Uh, for any percent, I just picked the Helix fossil because it's closer. However, in uh, you convinced me that for AOP and for diploma runs, that the Dome fossil is better. Uh, for two reasons. One, uh, when you need to get the Helix Fossil at the end of the game, it's just the t always the top op option, so you can just mash through. Uh, and two, the opposite, the the Fossil that is not selected is revived in the Fuchsia cutscene. So if you pick a Helix Fossil, there will be a Kabuto in the water in Fuchsia, and vice versa. If you pick Dome, it'll be a uh, Ammonite. And seeing the Ammonite feels very cute. So I kind of <laughs> like that. So you kind of win either way. You do get you either pick a fossil and then get to see the other one, so it works. Uh, and also, did I see a? I saw an onyx for a moment. <laughs> I think it was on oh, close screen. I have all these spawns. Yeah, are... Go back to AOP, please. Yeah, there are two one percent spawns in Mount Moon. It's the onyx and the clefable. They are only available on the. Well, I think Clefable is only available on the bottom floor. I think Onyx is available at any point in Mount Moon. Uh, and in terms of like, the catch em all categories, this used to be a big pain point because you would need the Clefable to spawn or get a double Moonstone. But there's actually a trick to be able to force that double Moonstone spawn uh, through, through enough times with the uh, kind of the connecting feature. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wish. What was out of Mount Moon? Uh, in just about like 34 and a half minutes, uh, not a bad time, especially for a beginner slash intermediate level player. Uh, Etchy wow. is probably going to be a little bit confused. He's going to be out of moon just under 35 minutes, which for him, he's probably saying, wow, this is really slow. But again, that high catch count does definitely account for quite a bit. Yeah, and it that, looks like uh, that time difference. It it looks like Etchy did not mark Paris uh, and mentioned it in chat, so he's aware of it. Um, so he's actually at 18 instead of 17, oh, uh, which is wow. So, so that, that 18 grass is patch, like, yeah, it's absurd. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you, I usually get like somewhere between 13 to 15, if I recall. It's been yep. a long time yep. since I've done this. 12 so, is like all right, is average. <laughs> um, but that grass patch, so after that grass patch, as you're walking towards Cerulean, I found a Sandshrew just chilling there one time, and I was like. What? Like, <laughs> it's so far away from the grass. There's no grass anywhere near. How'd you get here? Yeah, All I right. think Pokemon can spawn in bushes because if you notice on Route 1, the bell sprouts come out of the bushes yes. like all the time. Yeah, I've seen Oddishes do that a lot. All right, so now that we're here in Cerulean City, um, we're going to be taking a bit of a break from catches for um, for a little while, and it's going to be kind of a focus on fights. Um, something you'll see all the runners do um, is go into the Pokemon Center here in Cerulean City. It's the only Pokemon Center that we... Actually, no, it's not the only one we enter. Um, but it, it's the first one that we enter, and we enter it for one main reason, and that is that there is a move tutor uh, in the Pokemon Center that will teach uh, special moves to your starter Pikachu or Eevee. Uh, Pikachu here is going to learn the move Zippy Zap, uh, which is a 50 base power move that always crits and has plus two priority. Uh, so it's a very powerful move, um, especially for your partner, Pikachu. Uh, Eevee is going to be spending a bit more time there in the center learning three moves. Um, and those three moves are Bouncy Bubble, uh, which is a 90 base power special water absorb. Um, so it will heal Eevee with half the damage or heal Eevee half the health um, that it dealt in damage. It will also learn Buzzy Buzz, which is a 90 base power special electric move that is uh, will always paralyze, and it will learn Sizzly Slide, which is a 90 base power physical move that always burns. Um, and those are all going to be useful throughout the run. Um, it's a little unfortunate for Pikachu that it only learns the one move just because it doesn't have the same kind of move coverage that Eevee does have, uh, which will come into play later on, especially against some ground and rock types. But um, it does take a considerable amount of extra time for Eevee to learn those moves. So. Uh, Pikachu does end up saving a bit of time on this section. Yeah, um, the worst thing about the EV run is that we don't get to use Batty Bat. Uh. <laughs> a real move. That is that. That is the actual move. <laughs> yeah. Eevee, Eevee yeah, gets eight. 
Yeah, Eevee gets eight total of these special moves. We're going to learn four throughout the run. Um, Pikachu only gets three, and only one of them is actually useful, so... Uh, Wasn't yeah, Floaty Fall used at one point in one category somewhere? I think it was used on the route that would get Zapdos, because I think you needed a way to get through the Executor and Sylph, so you can get the Master Ball to catch the Zapdos. <laughs> it, yeah. The Pikachu's moves are but, just not nearly as broken as Eevee's. Um, Zippy Zap, is to nice. be fair, Zippy Zap is a very good move. Um, mm -hmm. But it's just not the same like level of move coverage that Eevee gets. Yeah, Etiquette said it was a plus two, so the only uh, move that we see that will outspeed it is Fake Outs from Meowth. There's two, fa there's two Meowths, one on this bridge and one later in Rock Tunnel. Um, so you... You know, it's not a big time loss if you get fake out. Um, but I'd say it's probably about 50-50 on if it chooses fake out. I can not. think of one other Pokemon that has it, and it's also in Rock Tunnel. It's the Kangaskhan. Oh, but you you, you X specials uh, turn one. So right, so yeah, you're right. And, and the Eevee version likes to X special attack on uh, both of those fights, basically for that reason. Mm -hmm. Does the Persian also fake out? Uh, Giovanni's Persian does have fake out. Yes, uh, yeah. both yeah, fight okay. out. You also, yeah. Okay. It's another so the only item Pokemon during. that use, yeah, the only one that matters are the the Meowths. Yeah, you can lose a turn, out. which is what three, four seconds. Oh yeah, so we're talking about X items. Um, this is this is the first game I think, or one of the first games where X items uh, raise your combat stage by two instead of one. Um, which is very helpful, and they're still the same price, so they're pretty cheap. Wow, what a um, what a race we got going on! Look at Etchy and Quo's screen right now; they are perfectly <laughs> synced up, going into oh Nugget God. Bridge. Go oh, you love next. to see that. Uh, so, bridge for Pikachu. Um, there's a Oddish fight um, that can kind of troll it, or uh, sorry, you use Oddish to fight a Sandshrew. And that's fine, but if you use Pikachu like you normally do, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Uh, you get poison stained, and poison stained, you don't want to get poisoned. Uh, that's bad. Yeah, and Eevee just go burr. I have the super effective move for all of them. But you can 2 uh, see that is, with Oddish. That is a decent, yeah, that's a decent difference that we see um, between the different uh, between the two versions is that in Eevee, because the special moves are so broken. Uh, it's actually quite simple to just take the partner Eevee and use it for all the fights through the first two hours of the game. Whereas on the Pikachu side of things, there's a lot more creativity that goes, uh, that is involved in the route. Uh, mostly that we see the Oddish early on. We saw that for Brock. We see that for this uh, Sandshrew fight. Uh, we see that oh, the, we see uh, both versions. Two controller, yeah. One of them using the two Oddish. Fight on uh, and Etchy's yeah. just using the Pika version. Uh, and then later for hideouts, uh, we're going to see Nido King, most likely. It could be Nido Queen. A uh, little bit of an assist from Rhyhorn is also possible. The Pikachu version does get a lot more creative with kind of like the assist from some other Pokemon that we catch through the run. Where again, like on Eevee, it's just like, hey, I've got super effective coverage for most everything and is kind of the star of the show for those uh, two hours through the the rocket hideout and tower. At which point, then we switch to our other main Pokemon, but still early on in this matchup. Yeah, uh, if you're wondering why we just don't 2v1 every fight, it's because fights are slow with two controllers, and then um, you have to like bring the, the, the trainer in and out, and that takes a couple seconds as you see them like fly to the heavens or come back from the heavens. Um, so they, they need yeah, to be what, like a turn or two faster? For it to be worth yeah about two, that two um yeah most most of the times we're just two controllering fights just to make them either a possible to begin with uh or b they do end up being faster or c they're just safer overall um like one example would be like the final rival fight if you tried to one control the fight you probably have to set up like a guard spec and then 2x special or 2x that's what i did on my specials first. and x speed you probably have to heal at some point in there before you're able to set up and sweep. Whereas fighting that with a two controller fight, you don't need the guard spec. You just kind of set up as you're attacking with your partner Pokemon and it can really make it uh, 
sometimes faster, sometimes safer uh, in most cases. But if it doesn't satisfy either of those conditions, you're just going to be one controlling the fight because you're just losing extra inputs, especially if your partner Pokemon just isn't doing anything in battle. If you lose this Rocket Grunt 10 times, you can actually join the Rocket Grunt. <laughs> is, that, is that how it works? Yes. <laughs> Does he continue to give you a nugget every single time? <laughs> no, like that's a fire relief green. That's a fire relief green thing, yeah. Because <laughs> he gives you I the wish. nugget up front, and then if you die, you fight him again. He gives you another nugget up front. Actually, had a pretty good. I, I don't remember Etchy's rival fight. I assume it's fine, but uh, this was a pretty good bridge because he flinched the Sanshu. He did get faked out by the Meowth, and then but he didn't get poisoned by the Squirtle time. Squirtle time. Squirtle's the point five percent. Spawn. I had yeah. Squirtle spawn on my way back. Oh, we got knock skip going on for Etchy's screen. Yo, let's go, oh, knock skip. Perfectly done. And now he's gonna do this skip very fast. Those trainer visions are not all that, uh, all that, uh, uh, all that long up and down the routes. Wow, that was very smooth from Etchy's screen to dodge all that trainer vision. Uh, we call that. And then here on Quo, you're seeing him do kind of the normal way. Uh, that weird movement that you saw earlier. Uh, is only been found because you didn't want to wait two extra seconds for that not one even, not even two extra to seconds. give you that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it is very difficult to do. Um, it's basically like doing three Alexa skips uh, all at once. You have to have very tight and definitive movement, and you don't want to do it slow. Otherwise, you're defeating the purpose of trying to save those maybe two seconds in the first place. It's uh, like but Edgy has seconds. been doing it for a long while. Uh, it is named after Knox Connery, who was the first to discover that you could take this funky route uh, and avoid that one spinner that ga that usually gated you at the bottom of the route. Uh, yeah, and it saves maybe about two seconds if you do it really well. Um, and then on top of that, he was able to dodge the final rotator um, mm -hmm. by not having to wait to pick up the ether knew that he could squeeze around her vision to the uh, north and then continue on to Bill's Cottage. Will we see any ditching today? <laughs> I <laughs> sure hope not. Um, so, so, that, that? <laughs> so that ether there um, is worth mentioning. Uh, throughout the tournament, uh, depending on the route that people are using, you will see people either pick up that ether or they'll pick up a max elixir in Mansion. Um, all else being equal, uh, it is a one second faster to pick up the ether. Um, you only need to ether your psychics in the Elite Four, um, so you don't need the elixir. The elixir is a bit of overkill. But um, the main reason why you'll see some people pick up one versus the other is to maintain what we call God Menu. So later on, uh, once we buy our X items in Vermilion City, actually coming up pretty soon in the next like 10 minutes or so, um, the battle menu is a little bit weird in that uh, you don't like your cursor position does not get saved between turns. Every turn you have to go to your bag and you start at the very top of your bag um, and you have to menu to your X items and your X items are always going to be the last things in your bag. So you could easily just hit left and it will go, you know, to the last item in your bag. Um, God menu allows you to hit left to get to your X attacks or X special attacks, depending on the version that you're playing and press up to go to the bottom uh, entry in the leftmost column. So rather than being the left or the last item, it is sort of like the first item of the last row of items um, to get to your other X attack or X special attack. Um, and so you're gonna wanna keep that throughout um, really the entire Pikachu and Eevee section of the run. Um, and the reason why the ether pickup will or will not mess that up is because this menu is also shared with all of your healing items and all of the items that you can use in battle. Um, so, you know, if you buy a burn heal early, then you don't pick up the ether and then you have to pick up the elixir later. And there's like a whole bunch of different things that go into it. Um, if you're following a route, you kind of just sort of inherit it. Um, but it's something if you're trying to change your shops at all or pick up different items, uh, you kind of have to, to keep in mind. Like there are some routes that will sell you won't see this in the braces just because it's not very safe. Uh, there's some routes that like you'll sell revives and, you know, not having revives in your menu will then mess up your inventory. So um, there's just a lot that goes into that. So, Switching so version adding... sucks because, like Etiquette said, they kind of flip flop between versions. So if you run yeah. full, you get your head gets all jumbled and you hit the wrong input. And you're like, dang it. 
so so etiquette i know that um you running on the eevee version uh one of the safe strats that you've been employing is buying paralyzed heals earlier mm -hmm. in the pewter shop how do you manage that extra item in your inventory to keep that god menu is there an item that you don't pick up is there an extra item that you sell to conserve that yeah, so I I buy the Paralyzed Heal in Pewter City. Um, normally in EV version, you'd buy the Paralyzed Heals in Vermilion, um, which is when you buy the, the bulk of your X items. Uh, and really after that point is when God Menu really starts to matter. Um, and what it ends up doing for me is it actually messes up the God Menu specifically in Mount Moon. Um, so I don't have to do any sort of like don't pick up an extra item or anything like that to fix it. I just sort of deal with it for that one battle, uh, the Jesse and James fight. So you just have one extra input because instead yep. of straight down or straight up, in that case, it's a it's an upright or a downright. I do so uh, two inputs instead of one. Yeah, I, I roll from right to down is how I do it. But yeah. Um. All right. So here is Route 6. Route 6 is going to be a pretty important catching section uh for specifically pikachu runners Eevee, Eevee runners do want to catch things um sometimes uh more so for experience <laughs> than anything um but ev runners chat. or uh, uh pikachu runners specifically want to see this nice orange striped dog yeah um, this they want to see five of them <laughs> no they're not <laughs> seeing, they're not <laughs> no one's doing early Persia. <laughs> um no, so, Except so, for Joker during his race, he's actually just going to catch five and get early version. Really is. Um, but yeah, no, th this Growlithe is going to sort of be like the secondary main for the next three or so battles. Um, it, it for some reason, at level 17 has Flamethrower, which is just completely busted. Um, and, you know, it just can handle a, a few Pokemon that, that Pikachu just doesn't have the moveset for. Um, one of Pikachu's biggest hurdles right now are uh, grass poison type Pokemon. So uh, Oddishes and Glooms. Um, and it's no coincidence that the next two battles that we do, or the next two planned battles, I should say, um, involve both an Oddish and a Gloom. So uh, it's, it's just one of those things that it just comes at such a perfect time to sort of help aid the Pikachu through these fights. Um, and it doesn't even lose time because of it. Um, it's the same amount of turns that Eevee would do with its busted move set. Um, so it ends Ooh. up being really good. Oh, uh, that's, so that is so lucky for Quo because he was standing at the bottom of the route saying, where's my orange striped dog? And looked yep. like he was just about to head back north to reset the route. And out of nowhere, that puppy came out from, from the bottom of the route and said, here I am, here I am. <laughs> We unfortunately, it, it made a beeline for him, for sure. We might see it when Zeon gets to um, Route 6, but you can see an Abra, and Abra is kind of unique where if it's facing you and you run towards it, it'll disappear. Mm -hmm. um, you either have to approach it from behind or you have to like rotate your second controller and keep like bouncing it so it doesn't teleport away from you um, as you're walking towards it. If it's like in a corner, uh, that's the worst. Or, it's a, also worse nice if it just falls. I did love that you showed me that, that like <laughs> the second controller is actually kind of like the second player is kind of a weird, kind of has these weird hitboxes. It can't really interact with anything else in the overworld. It can, it, like it can't talk to trainers, it can't pick up items. It's just more like, you know, for your three-year-old cousin to be like, here, you can play with me too. And they're like walking around and controlling. You can play with me However, too, think. <laughs> yeah. However, if the second player does move within the hitbox of a overworld Pokemon, the Pokemon does is like this jump. It like pops up. It doesn't initiate the battle, but it does freeze them in place. And it's really important for, uh, for Abra specifically, because yeah, if you are approaching an Abra from, um, if you're approaching Abra from its forward facing side, you can freeze it basically by by interacting it with it with the second controller. Uh, unfortunately oh, for Xeon, uh, he did miss the Route 25 skip, trying to just inch, inch his way through. Uh, but he did hit the Squirtle trainer, which is the top trainer. I almost freaked out. You got me, even though I was watching. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so we, we were explaining some other stuff while it was happening. Uh, we'll have a chance to see it on Xeon's screen as well as Etchy and Quo on the way out of Vermilion. Um, but the first 
of a few trainer skips just happened. So um, this category is NMS, stands for no mount skips. Um, we won't be doing any mount skips. We'll kind of explain what they are uh, when we get to Victory Road, because that's where it's relevant. Um, but there are a few trainer skips that we can do that we more just abuse the fact that the vision for trainers doesn't exactly line up with what you'd expect. Um, so in this case, there are two trainers, one on each side of the entrance to Vermilion City. Um, and they both have their vision stop just before the midpoint of the uh, path. And so if you line yourself up in a pretty uh, pretty strict way, um, it's a little bit lenient, but it's not that lenient. Uh, it, is it is quite easy to mess up if you aren't very well practiced in it. Um, then you can skip right past them. Um, in Eevee, if you do hit either of the trainers, it's not too bad. Um, one of them has a Bell Sprout that you can sizzly slide, and the other one has a Charmander that you can bouncy bubble. Um, Pikachu does have a bit of a harder time if, it, if they happen to hit the Bell Sprout trainer. Um, but, I mean, the, these runners are, are great at it, so uh, they were able to get through without any issue. Yeah, it was that great to see Thunderbolt them, uh, both Bell Sprout at level 25. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's. What are some of the highest levels that you've seen at this point? Because we have seen both players did get a chancy. It wasn't an overwhelming amount of experience. Um, My, but we've seen them at what, 22, 25, 27 for Eevee version at one point. Yep. And that was the record run. Well, I have a very tinted view because I don't remember pre five growls experience. <laughs> I was gonna say in AOP, you could easily be 25 at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and that's where some of these very top runners, especially Echi being kind of the, kind of like the, the the stats man when it comes to all these battles, you just kind of like tool around with fights and be like, well, what if I did get a super massive Chansey and I'm level 30 for this rival fight? Can I one controller this? Do I need an X attack, X special attack? There are certain weird scenarios that once you've run the game a whole bunch, eventually you're gonna get a weird scenario and mm -hmm. being able to capitalize on that is really what separates, and in this case, it separates a world record holder from everyone else. Um, and I... the biggest example was his uh, Eevee record, which catches a massive chancy on Route 6, and basically on the fly was just like, oh, I don't have to two controller or set up at all for the following fight, and you just start saving a ton of time by leveraging all that super high EXP. I tried to make Ivysaur Pikachu work for Route 10, but it's not. <laughs> Level of moves are bad in this game. I don't yeah. learn anything. Um, but yeah, one of, one of the things that's uh, interesting about this game is compared to some other Pokemon runs. Um, so there's obviously there's no RNG manipulation. Uh, RNG manip hasn't really been a thing since Generation 5. Um, but the starters all have perfect stats. Uh, you're always going to end up with 31 IV in every stat, um, which is really nice. That's why like the nature was the most important thing early on uh, when we were talking about that. It wasn't like, oh, what are my stats? It's specifically what is my nature? Um, and one of the things that you end up getting in a speed run that has variable stats. Uh, so you think like a game like uh, Sword and Shield or Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire is you have different strategies based on what your stats actually are. Uh, so, oh, I've got 20 IV attack. I can do this strat instead of this other one. Um, you don't have that so much in this run, but you do have this sort of wide range of levels that you can be, um, which just makes it so much harder to, to route and to plan for and to write notes for. Um, but it really does allow you to take advantage of it in certain cases. Like this fight that Echi's about to go do, um, you could be anywhere from level like 18 with just sort of standard experience uh nothing nothing wild happening all the way up to like level 28 um if you got incredibly lucky with like chancy and stuff and anywhere in between um and so it, it really does make every run really unique um in addition to all those different variants of levels you also have the variants of avs that you gain so if you happen to have a ton of attack avs um, then you can start doing different things than if you end up having, you know, no attack AVs and maybe you have a ton of special attack and all this other stuff. So yeah, to uh, it's a really unique that. run. Go ahead. Yeah, so to go off that, um, if this Pikachu has like super good attack, you could two X attack and headbutt the Gloom and one shot it. Um, but you need like super 
good levels and attack, which is very uh, not standard for 80%. Yeah, rare, but not impossible. So knowing those situations can be really valuable when you do have that super high attack. It's like, all right, I can take advantage of that in these situations. And because of that level discrepancy, it only gets wider and wider the deeper into the run you go. For on the Eevee side, like my notes for hideout just start getting so complicated because at that point, there's like four different scenarios you can have. You can be like, oh, I'm just normal attack, special attack and experience, or you have high of one of those values, or you're using Nido King, or maybe some other weird thing has popped up because there are just so many different ways you can do a lot of these fights because of mainly that level discrepancy why, that through the run. Why is actually moving so slowly on Rock 10? Like, where's the Persian? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was like, where is this I, I going? Wanted, I wanted to mention this. Uh, can we just bring up on Xeon's screen? I kind of love that the bell sprout oh, doesn't yeah. follow you, it leads you. It's always in front of the camera. It is. The Spiro does it too. Spiro does Speaking it too. from experience, it's, it's very disorienting when you're trying to run and there's something running just ahead of you, but not like on your path because it can't be on your path because you haven't gotten there yet. Oh, it's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little funky. It is kind of, it is disorienting, but it's kind of cool. And I love that when you change directions, like that bell sprout is yep. moving. Yeah. I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get there. I love it though. All right. Unfortunately, Pikachu can't take care of that sand shoe, so the headbutt strat doesn't really need anything. <laughs> you can also use Kadabra for these fights, um, but. Average is 5, 4% on five, Route 6? 5% five percent on, on six, Route yeah. 6, uh, yeah. and it's down to 4% on Route 7 because Kadabra is the 1% displacement. And uh, it also looks really funky when you have that second controller out and the second player can just run through Trainer's Vision because, again, they mm -hmm. can't interact with anything else the, in the overworld. Moving both of them requires me to focus, like, super hard. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely takes a bit of skill. Uh, power so Edgy is power the first to, Yeah, Edgy is the first to reach uh, Route 10 here. And I find this route so interesting because uh, a lot of beginner players, when we tell them, hey, what's a big difference that can uh, help you out in getting faster? It's about getting excellent throws and just making sure you know what your cycles are. Well, it's taken to the next level uh, in this route because after selling all of our Pokeballs and buying Great Balls, now the second controller is auto switched to double great balls and now you don't need excellent throws anymore for most of these pokemon now nidorina is one of those exceptions uh no nidoran female on the screen Etchy was probably like i just need to get this uh, but getting a nice throw or a great throw on any of the most of the like small pokemon that spawn here is like totally acceptable and you can really start, um, again, leveraging like these faster cycles by Good skip just there rushing by Zeon. these throws. Yeah, great skip by Xeon. I saw that in the corner of my eye. Uh, and the, all these Pokemon uh, usually aren't worth a ton of experience either. So you're not losing out on all that much EXP by getting a great throw instead of an excellent throw in these situations. Yeah, and Route 10 is a, a really interesting route as well because this is where you start to like really finalize what is my catch route going to be for the rest of the run. So um, most runners will start with 50 planned Pokemon. You need 50 Pokemon to get into Koga's Gym. So you plan out 50. Um, and then over the course of the run, you're going to be taking some away from the plan. You're going to be adding some because you got bonuses, things like that. Um, and so uh, if you look at, for example, I don't know... Uh, you know, Quo's catch tracker is going to be coming up soon here. Um, has 53 planned. Um, you don't need to catch 53. So, like, that's going to have to get pared down at some point. Um, this is where you start to really go, okay, how many Pokemon can I skip? Can I leave this area without catching Spiro? Can I leave this area without catching Rattata? Stuff like that. Um, and so uh, this is a really big make it or break it kind of point of the run. Um, a lot of the time, especially on PB attempts. In races, you're probably going to see people um, wait a little bit longer than they may want to. And, you know, there's a strategy you can do where you can, like, use a repel and then relure. It'll remove all the spawns and add new ones. Because uh, another mechanic that we haven't mentioned is 
Uh, every area has a maximum number of spawns that can be there at a time. Uh, Route 10, you can only see four things at a time. If four things are on screen, nothing else is going to show up. Um, so you either need to do something like, uh, you know, enter and exit a load zone or repel and relure uh, in order to get new spawns. And so you'll see people do that a lot here as well. Um, I'm going to be interested to see if Etchy does go back up because he did only catch two things on the routes and one was just the mid arena. And he's he went immediately into this fight. He has a high catch count. Yeah, so he's I'm already unmarked. Surprised. Yeah. yeah, I'm not surprised that he says, hey, I'm way ahead on all of my catches and my plan was higher than it needs to be. So he was able to skip a lot of things that were on the route. Yeah, yeah 103 I've... tunnel entrance with 23 pokes is a pretty, pretty solid time, so. Yeah, and he didn't need to, to wait around for any of the other Route 10 spawns, so yeah. into tunnel he goes. Uh, Quo was a little bit more hesitant. Again, lower catch count. Okay, I probably need a few, you know, three or four things to spawn on Route 10 before I leave. Kind of your main five for that route are both the Nidoran genders, uh, Ratata, Spiro, and then Krabby is a little bit of a rare spawn, but if you get usually four out of those five, you're pretty set, but it does kind of depend on how your catch route went prior. If you've got a whole bunch of bonuses, maybe you only need three things, or in Enchi's case, it was just two. It was really like one and a half because well, he didn't even get the Nidoran female. Yeah, so Pikachu wants to catch one of the Nidorans uh, at base level um, because we'll use it in hideout, either Nido King or Nido Queen. Uh, Nido King is better, um, so really wanted that. Um, but as we're talking with uh, the now double greats, so the Nid Arena catch, um, the double great excellent is 88.07%. If it was just great Pokeball excellent, it'd be 71.73. So that's, you know, seven, like seven, like 16% difference, like pretty decent. pretty decent. And that's yeah, literally what we did for so long. Like yeah. Yeah. three oh. years of this game's existence, we did that, so. Yeah, the double great ball, um, now tech, uh, has helped a lot of those like mid evolutions so much. We always you'll see it here, Traveler, yeah. But but yeah, but now things like Nidorino, Nidorina, Raticate is like massive now. Like like the effectiveness of catching Ratata early is amplified so much more knowing that Raticate is actually a quite reasonable catch and a high amount of EXP for this section of the run. Yeah. This, this section of the run, the, the big experience bomb that you were like really hoping for uh, was always Graveler. And Graveler was never a great catch. It was always something that you would you would consider ras ball, uh, raspberrying, which increases the catch rate. Um, and even then, it could sometimes break out. So, um, you know, it ends up being that like a lot of these Pokemon are roughly the same amount of experience and roughly the same catch rate as, as Graveler, uh, but now are up to almost 90% catches with these yeah. double greats. Um, it's, yeah. it's absolutely and that's huge. the Raz, and then you hit the Raz, you hit him with a Raz. And, and it's like 99. Like, yeah, excellent catch. Yeah, 9,900%. Um, depending on the CP, because it's the CP that is plugged into that it's, uh, catch so formula. Graveler, Graveler with a Raz and excellent is guaranteed to go in. Um, yeah. Which is, which with is max wild. IV. So. Right. Yeah, compared to what we were doing for three years, which would have been uh, great Pokeball excellent, is 71% about, and then with the Raz, 82.87%. So, you know, really helps I like us. to commend <laughs> Quo for still keeping this pace up. Like, he's doing such a great job. It's just these little things, you know, like on that Q-Bone, that, that left throw came out just a little bit late, so he didn't hit the circle. Uh, didn't cost him in this case. Uh, but he's doing a really good job to keep pace with Echi. Like, that is not this... an understatement to be this close. Even though that the catch route is a little different, um, mm -hmm. this is, like, this is really, really respectable. Uh, his PB, I believe, is a 315. Uh, and this is a great, great pace. Uh, low on catch Who's count. Gonna rare char? He's just going to keep going. You going to get rare char? He he is. Oh. Yes, oh, we got Rare Char. I, I, I miss seeing it on the screen. So, so Rare Char is the so point close, So close to the, the triple um, <laughs> the triple starter, just no Squirtle. I like oh, wait, how nice we find this. Nice read by Edgy over. to uh, hold off on that throw 
because the starter Pokemon have very fast attack cycles. They can attack uh, basically within one circle cycle, uh, unlike most other Pokemon. So he read that perfectly. He would have gotten attacked if he would have thrown early. Zeon got the uh, Vermilion skip, so no one hit any of the Ver Vermilion yep. characters. Going up, and that's I find impressive is easier. Because that's the most. That's the most difficult skip of the run. Yeah, uh, you get way more time to to um, to set yourself up when you're coming from the bottom because you have like such a long run up. Um, so I yeah. find it easier on the second time. All right, and so Etchy Screen, uh, one of the most important Pokemon to find in here in Rock Tunnel, uh, this is Rhyhorn. So this game doesn't have a bike like other Pokemon games. Um, instead, you can ride certain Pokemon. Uh, not every Pokemon can be ridden. A lot of them can, or a, a decent number of them can. The ones that make sense for the most part. Uh, Rhyhorn is the first one, barring early Persian, early Arcanine, um, <laughs> that is you know reasonable to ride. Um, and you're going to see the movement speed absolutely increase. Um, Pikachu does have a decent backup. If you don't find a Rhyhorn, you can um, actually use a Firestone and evolve your Arcanine early. Um, and Arcanine is a very fast ride Pokemon. Um, Eevee kind of just has to suffer if they don't find one, uh, which is a bit unfortunate. And uh, these ride Pokemon are going to have different tiers that they're in. Uh, so a Pokemon like Rhyhorn is pretty fast, but not the fastest. Uh, later on, we're going to be using a Rapidash, which is in the fastest tier alongside Pokemon like Arcanine, Persian, Aerodactyl. Um, but it's in its own special tier with Aerodactyl, unfortunately. Yeah, as I say, it's technically faster than Rapidash. But, you mean um, Persian, other way. Oh, yeah, 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 sorry. Um, but yeah, so it's, uh, you know, getting that, that Rhyhorn there is very nice. Um, rough estimates, if you don't find a Rhyhorn at all, in Rock Tunnel, uh, you lose about 45 seconds to movement in EV version. So it is a considerable uh, time save to find one. first room Rhyhorn? That's assuming or? last room Rhyhorn. Okay. Last room Rhyhorn to first patch of grass Ponyta. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, if, if Persian was as fast as Ravdash, skip all those Route 10 and 9 trainers, <laughs> skip all these trainers. It'd be awful, but it would be great at the same time. Just one pixel too slow. Yeah. I'm lucky. Uh, no Kang is gone, right? No one seen one yet? I haven't uh, seen one I yet. I really one hope if we see charge. one, we don't see a catch. <laughs> So we've kind of go gone over like the catch formula being discovered was such a big improvement for the run. Uh, probably one of the biggest reasons, I mean, probably the biggest reason uh, why sub three is now obtainable. Because last year at around this time, we did barrier blitz, at which point. Uh, two years ago. It's two, years. two years ago already? Yep. Yeah. Wow. Well, you were the record holder still at the time with that 302, which you yep. finally beat yesterday. I did finally beat yesterday, yep. So first oh, nice. of all, congratulations Congrats. to that. Thank you, thank you. Uh, but yeah, finally getting that sub, but now it's the sub three mark. And the biggest, probably the biggest reason was knowing the catch rate formula and knowing how to really speed up a lot of these cycles since we don't have to get excellent throws anymore. But are there any like big just fight route improvements i know there's a lot of work being done and tooling with the especially like the hideout strats mm -hmm. you know eevee is trying to borrow some of the nido king stuff do you think there's any kind of huge uh route improvements on the I, fight yes. side yes it is cadaver strats because <laughs> yes cadaver strats is kind of the next thing um it is unpleasant to grind i did some grinding back when the back when the record did not need it uh it was we were looking at like a 308 or something like that um but yeah i would say that's the big thing i think the the biggest things that have happened recently um are a lot more of these sort of situational strategies so starting here in rock tunnel really um specifically in ev version um there are some of these in pika as well um there are just so many different ways you can approach every fight um, for example, the fight against that Kangaskhan, um, I can think of three different ways that you can get through that fight that you would do situationally um, and 
they all are roughly the same amount of time. It's just which one is better in your current situation. Um, Eevee having the move Bouncy Bubble that heals it is incredible utility um, to where you know you can do a slightly slower fight that uses Bouncy Bubble, so you end up at full health at the end of it rather than doing the faster fight and menuing to heal. Um, and so that ends up being like a, a really big thing in Eevee version to, to try and like decipher which way is my fastest way through this fight and things like that. Um, so I, I think that's really like where a lot of the the fight strategy changes have happened in the last like maybe year, year and a half, two years. Uh, really probably since Barrier Blitz um, is just really coming up with what are all these alternative strategies you can do and when is the best time to do them. Um, so Echi leaving Rock Tunnel here at about one, almost like 113 flat uh, with 29 Pokemon. That is a fast. very fast time. Yeah. Um, this is this is kind of like you're not done with your catches, um, but this is a really good indication of how your run actually is, what your tunnel exit time with your Pokemon count. Um, I, I know the copy pasta, but it is about 30 seconds per Pokemon. <laughs> um, so if you if we see like Quo leave Rock Tunnel with 30 Pokemon, um, you can sort of add 30 seconds to like with one more Pokemon than Echi has, then you can roughly add 30 seconds to um, to Echi's time to see like, all right, how does that actually compare? Um, it's a bit over 30 seconds, but 30 is easy to add. And subtract the fast. One, the one thing I noticed uh, on Echi's tracker is that the only Pokemon he's missing from Tunnel is Graveler, which is the highest EXP. Interesting. Okay. So I, it doesn't look like his EXP is suffering, but he did not see a Graveler in Rock Tunnel, and that was the only Pokemon he was missing. So, yeah, so Echi didn't get Graveler, but already has Charmeleon. I think his Tunnel experience was fine <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the fact that he already has that level up uh i think is yeah. usually you enough. get it on the rival fights um yeah he's 20 his pikachu's 28 right now um okay. so i think that's a lot of the early game catches and the chancy really coming through and helping him out probably a bit of the uh the nittery was it the nittarina or nittarino the nittarino yeah. yeah yeah that probably well. that probably replaced the Graveler EXP, and it's worth about the same. Um, so missing that one catch, probably not going to hurt him on the EXP side. It's just he's missing a catch. Yeah, so when we're catching Pokemon 2, we want um, Pokemon kind of have different behaviors. Um, like uh, easy, like I'd say one of the ones beginners first learn is like you throw after the Geodude punches, um, and then you can get an excellent like basically every time. Uh, oh, Kegis Khan! I hate. Oh you. no! I hate Kegis Khan. I think someone should ride it. <laughs> All right, so I I just wanna I just oh, wanna more point out. Importantly, though, the Rhyhorn is on the screen. Yes. Yeah. More importantly, is the Rhyhorn. Uh, I also do want to point out uh, world record holder Echi showing off some brand new strategies here uh, using Fury Attack against the Jolteon. It was an interesting strategy. It didn't quite work out. I think the way he wanted it to. Oh um, damn! Nice new strategy. <laughs> can't believe I didn't notice it. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, basically just pressed up again by accident. Um, poison poison Jab is going to be Nidoking's uh, main attacking move throughout the section. Um, and Poison Jab is in slot four. So it's a really easy mistake to make to, you know, uh, menu up to Poison Jab and then just see Poison Jab again and want to menu up to it. Um, that is actually something that's uh, important to note about catching a Nidorina or a Nidorino um, is... The level 24 uh, Nidoran male and Nidoran female um, have just learned to move at their level um, and their evolution doesn't have that move yet. So if you happen to catch like a Nidorina or a Nidorino, I should say, then it won't have Poison Jab, which is the Nidoking's main attacking move. Um, and so you can still use it. Um, you have to sort of adapt and use Thrash instead. Um, but that's one of the like the main benefits to... Um, catching a Nidoran male specifically. Chancy also, we gone. see a Chansey on Zeon's screen. Route 10 Chansey, not the worst Chansey in the world. Um, Route 10 pretty Chansey. bad catch rate is the main issue with it. Yeah, um, hopefully, Z hopefully Zeon is um, 
Because the one the one thing he's forgotten is to switch that second player over to Great Balls. So not the best catch rate, and it's even worse because uh, Pokeball is occupying one of those slots. Okay, I count like every Chansey, and uh, but I don't have round ten Chansey <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> I could probably pull it up if I find my um, if I find my sheet, but I don't think I've also calculated Chansey either. There it is. Though. Yeah, there you has been it. caught. Hundred percent chance. On that throw, <laughs> specifically. Yes. Well, Sheep would say it's either 50, 50, 50. No, on that particular throw, it was definitely 100%. 100%. Because it happened. <laughs> uh, but that, that uh, if you, it's one of those things, if you are ever, like, in an EXP deficit uh, and you catch a Chansey, you probably fixed it. Uh, level 24 here for Zeon entering Rock Tunnel is definitely not um, all that bad. Interesting movement from Echi there. Yeah, that was a... <laughs> <laughs> and she's on an amazing on. pace. I'm going to criticize everything he does. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> what was oh, don't get hit by that gambler. It that, was, that it was okay. Dude. He had no vision. No vision. That well, old dude has a, uh, a Rhyhorn with only horn drill. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, yeah. the the Discord feed that we're watching this on is a little crispy, so it did not look like he was in mid-spin yet, so that's why I freaked out. Uh, yes. actually looks better than it did before for some reason I it, it, it's going in and out it's fine it's i blame discord not jordan love you jordan yeah shout outs to tech by the way yeah. huge mm -hmm. shout outs jordan oh abra so you see everyone from uh, behind. everyone on tech but jordan especially setting up the rtmp servers and everything for us is phenomenal here's abra abra is a great find are we um, gonna see cadaver strats <laughs> no, you cannot do cadaver strats with just a random Abra. You gotta lure it. <laughs> um, but Abra's just one of those Pokemon. It's a it's a pretty easy catch. Um, if you uh, are comfortable with the throw, uh, it's also two quick Pokemon because everywhere that you catch it, it's a single level to evolve. Um, and it's also you know just a pretty fast evolution in general. Like the the experience curve means it doesn't need to gain that much experience. Um. You'll notice actually doesn't have the party space for it, um, but should probably have space for it uh, around like Pokemon Tower, maybe Route 17. Uh, so it should be easy enough to evolve. Um, um, Route 6, cool. if you if well, you catch a pretty Abra, decent run going too, because uh, I think he had like a 118-ish tunnel exit with 29 pokes, um, which is not bad at all. Uh, definitely caught up because from the low catch route from the early game, Definitely caught up through the uh, Route 10 and Rock, Rock Tunnel sequence. Yeah, uh, I think if you come back from Rival 3 SSAN and you catch an Unlord Abra, it might take like a couple level, level ups, like it might be 13, and I think that was 16, I think. Yeah. But like most cases, it'll be more than just need one level. Hideout is so much fun. I wish we had fire red leaf green spinners tiles would be so nice instead of taking years to well they're complete. they're not as slow as uh red blue guess we got that <laughs> no but the rivals are scared of ghosts so he <laughs> really and makes that clear weird. a couple times doesn't he yeah all right, so Etchy getting through that first fight here in Hideout. Um, that fight can be a bit scary. Uh, there's another one of those fights. There's like a million ways through that fight. Uh, the main issue is that Raticate's pretty fast. Um, most EVs will be outsped by it. Um, Pikachu would be faster, but Pikachu also doesn't have the best time through it. And it's also just a little inefficient because you want to be using Nidoking for a lot of these fights instead of Pikachu. So you want Nidoking in slot one. Um, but the, the main issue is it has both bite and hyper fang which can flinch you and it also has super fang so if you go it's really easy to like go in at full health get super fang to half health and just get like bite or hyper fang flinched and now you're just dead yeah um it's actually got it's a lucky. pretty tough fight. uh level 30 in like some form of x attack or helping hand double kick will kill the uh will one shot the eradicate if you're usually faster or like always faster 
Yeah, Pikachu should should always outspeed because yeah. the uh, the base stats of these partner Pokemon are boosted, oh, boosted, and Pikachu's has a ton of speed. I believe it's one fifteen base speed for partner Pikachu. Uh, which is why, go. which is why Pikachu can actually run minus speed and be runnable because it's, and you can you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think it only affects like one fight in the whole game if you're minus speed. It's the it's this Archer fight. Um, it's his the, but, but, is yeah, the Golbat is the one thing, but it, yeah. that usually doesn't matter. I don't think it should. Like it toxic. usually does not matter. No. Do we even have toxic? I'm not sure. No, it's um, I want to say it's like Air Cutter or Air Slash, one of the two, and Crunch are its main moves. Um, I've never those, seen. Those are the two Ooh. I've seen. Quo getting awfully close to that gambler. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's scaring you with the gambler. <laughs> the the gambler your heart, heart yeah, it's, a little bit. I, I definitely don't. What Quo did there made a lot of sense. Um, so your ride Pokemon cannot spawn too close to the wall. Uh, you're actually going to see that in action on purpose in a couple of places in this run. Um, and because you, when you're going below that gambler, um, the you're too close to both the wall and the gambler for the Pokemon to spawn. So you want to like get yourself a little bit away from the wall uh, once you get past him to try and respawn your, your Rhyhorn. Um, it's just by doing that, um, it, it does get a little bit... Oh no! Not on purpose? Oh no! I've had that, that was not on purpose. Before, so yeah, so Quo was trying to go for that glowing Raticate, and instead hit the uh, instead hit the guardhouse. Uh, that has happened to me before uh, when an Abra was on screen, and I got a little upset at that one. <laughs> okay, Zeon caught a Graveler. Nice. Oh, but yeah, we're gonna step on this rolly chair that she is very safe. Everyone should do it. I could do it. I could. I could do exactly what she's doing right now. <laughs> is your chair a rolly chair? Yeah, it is. It's on but floor. do you? But <laughs> but do you have a Pikachu that's looking? Mega sus right now because I see Pikachu vent. Wow. So yeah, I you saw can, that Pikachu vent. You can somehow make right Pikachu. You can somehow make Pikachu run on two two legs instead of four. Um, I used to do it all the time, but now I can't. So I don't know what I do differently now. But you can make it run on two legs, and it looks really weird and funny. But you'll just see four. Yeah, that's Uh, uh, okay. All right. Um, so now that Echi has the lift key, I uh, was going into a pretty nasty three fight gauntlet um, against Jesse and James, uh, Rocket admin boss Archer, uh, and then Team Rocket boss Giovanni. Um, I see he's doing new strats that I don't know. Yeah, so Edgy's going to be doing uh, this fight using <laughs> Nidoking and Rhyhorn. Um, this is kind of a new thing. Rhyhorn comes equipped with the move Drill Run. Uh, it is a 95% accurate uh, 80 power move, I think. Uh, ground move. That is really useful here um, because mainly because the Pokemon Let's Go games do not have abilities. Um, so we're going to be going up against a Weezing that would normally have Levitate, but because there are no abilities, we can hit it with a ground move um, and an Arbok. And the ideal way for this fight to go uh, is we're going to X attack and drill run, and we should one shot the Arbok. And then the second turn, uh, you can drill run and helping hand and one shot the Weezing. Um, it does depend on your Rhyhorn stats. Uh, it depends on a lot of things, um, but it optimally is a two turn fight if you're doing this fight with pikachu standardly it is a four turn fight uh, and it's a double battle so it is quite a punishing two turns to lose um so hopefully edgy uh gets the ranges here if there are any um i haven't seen the stats it looks like the rhyhorn's only level 24 which is a bit rough 
Yeah. Um, so it'll hit twenty five when it kills the first one. Should, if it yeah, if it kills it's it, still, yeah, it's still going to be a range. I was tooling around with this as well. Oh, nice uh, crit! He did get the Arbok range, which is great. No, that was yeah, a that okay. was a crit. So Drill runs a high crit rate move, so that was a one in eight crit instead of a one in twenty four, but still a very lucky one to get. Is sixty one attack good? I don't. Know. That is pretty good. Sixty one attack is very good for the Rhyhorn. Yeah, I was actually tooling around with this fight with the Rhyhorn Neo King strats, even on the Eevee version because it looks and kind of theoretically has a better chance to two-shot Jesse and James even on uh, even on the Eevee side because Eevee's normal Jesse and James is like a three-turn fight. So any chance that you can save that one turn can be huge. Um, and it did work out for Echi. Again, level 24 is not great. Uh, so that crit was definitely necessary uh, for that fight. He did have high attack, so maybe it wasn't, but it definitely... It, um, guaranteed his chances oh, switches to for Pikachu. sure. You um, can, I, if find, you, if you... I find that the, the Wheezy range is tougher to hit uh, even with the Helping Hand boost. Um, and there's a whole other like there's a whole other like gambit of things that can go wrong. Um, mainly the uh, Arbok has Glare and if it does Glare into the Rhyhorn, you do have to just hit through Paralysis. You don't have an opportunity to heal it off because you do need to use Helping Hand with the Nido King at the same time. Yeah, and uh, especially... I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put this out there. It has not worked out for me. I've done the strat <laughs> like five or six times and I've had four turn fights or worse every single time. So it is not consistent at all. Uh, but if you do get it to work, it is a huge boost if it does. Yeah, and another problem in Pikachu version specifically um, is you don't buy paralyzed heals normally in the route. Um, Electric type Pokemon cannot be paralyzed, so you don't really have a use for paralyzed heals for a lot of the run. It's really just this one section. Um, so if you do happen to get paralyzed there, you either have to burn your uh, Shalor Sable, which is sort of like a full heal item. Uh, one of only two that you get before your final shop in Saffron City later on. Um, or you just sort of have to, to power through it. Um, it's also worth mentioning in, there's another option in Eevee to do this sort of Rhyhorn fight where um, instead of using Nidoking as your partner you, you use the Eevee um, and you have the same first turn where you have to KO the Arbok in, in one turn um, but the second turn you can actually use Glitzy Glow which is the fourth uh, special move that Eevee is going to be learning uh, when it gets to Celadon City that is a 90 base power special move that sets up a light screen uh, and you can Glitzy Glow and Drill Run, and that is also a range, but I believe is a better range than the Helping Hand Drill Run. Um, but it is a little bit slower because of just, you know, double damage and all that kind of stuff. So um, it really does depend on your situation at the time, which one is better to go for. Um, and yeah, so now we're moving on to Giovanni, uh, the first Giovanni battle here for Echi. Um, this fight is pretty different between the two games. Uh, they used to be almost the exact same um, way, way back in the day uh, in terms of like the, the general strategy and X items used. Um, but the way that this is going to work here, uh, this Persian is incredibly fast. It's the fastest thing we face in the first half of the game. I think it has like 105 speed or something, and the Pikachu is nowhere close to that uh, generally. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up two X attacks on turn one. Um, that's going to put Pikachu up to plus four attack. Uh, we should get fake out. Perfect. Um, and now speed doesn't matter because we have a plus two priority move. So we're going to set up another X attack uh, to go to plus six. This should get rid of the Persian. Um, and then the Pokemon in the back is a Rhyhorn. Rhyhorn is a very big problem for Pikachu. But with a plus six double kick plus helping hand, um, it should get the KO, which is... Uh, a lot closer than you might think. Um, this Rhyhorn yeah, is a, very bulky. That was a lot of damage. Okay, wow. Etchie's, no, if, Etchie's Pikachu's if kind Pikachu's, of cracked. If your Pikachu's good enough, you can just plus four helping hand uh, the Rhyhorn. If, I don't know if Etchie's would have been good enough. Uh, I don't even know if you might need higher level. I think on that plus four roll, it. it probably would have been good enough. <laughs> but I don't think he has plus attack. Um, I think it was neutral it, just with AVs. Yeah. Um, the plus special attack that you can three turn Jesse James, by the way. Oh, it is plus attack according to chat. If you're uh, the Jesse James could be three turns with like the Pikachu strat, it wouldn't be two turns. 
that yeah. edgy head, but but I don't I don't think it. just from looking at that and not knowing the intricacies of the Pikachu version, like it doesn't look like you'd even waste any turns setting up the plus six. You only lose no, like, you don't. You, you lose the save. menuing time, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just would save the menuing time from plus four. So in a in a situation like this, like even if you're plus attack, it is a race. Like why would you even give the Rhyhorn an opportunity? Yo. Who wants to fly on this thing? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's throwback to yellow version. That's like the floaty fall. Yeah. So um, one of the things that uh, runners of other Kanto games might be like, wait, what about is um, so there are no HMs in the game. Instead, you get these moves for your partner Pokemon. Um, and the biggest thing is that these moves uh, do not require badges. Um, normally in Generation 1 and the remakes in Generation 3, in order to use Cut, you need to have Misty's badge. In order to use Fly, you need to have Surge's badge. We don't have Surge's badge, but we can still fly. Um, and that really enables us to sort of do all of this story progression and then come back and do the badges later, uh, which is such a nice thing for the speedrun. Um, if we had to do Surge early, it would be like a five turn fight or something like that. We'd probably have to fight an extra rocket to get dig. Maybe we'd catch Diglett or something. I don't know. It would just be a nightmare. Um, and so we can actually just delay it and do surge or yeah, surge over two hours into the run, um, which is a very nice thing for the speed run. But if we had to catch Diglett, you could do a Lolan Doug trio strats. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are we, are we going to see that? Are we, are we going to see that? We are that? not. <laughs> uh, I did notice that one of the other strats that we saw on that Jesse James fight was Quo use the uh, Jigglypuff Sacrifice mm. fight, where you will oh, lead boy. Jigglypuff as the partner Pokemon, and it baits the Arbok uh, and the Weezing, uh, though it will be KO'd by that point, to attack the Jigglypuff, kind of like kill AI. Uh, and it does help the survivability of both Pikachu and Eevee. Um, that strat at the top end has been retired, uh, but it is still a very good strat, especially in a race setting. Uh, it is incredibly safe to have that sacrifice strat uh, in place for both the uh, hideout and the tower of Jesse and James fights. That didn't kill? Oh my gosh, that's lucky. Oh, so, so uh, we mentioned Rash Nature. Um, Rash Nature is kind of sketchy here. Um, because Sludge Bomb is a special move, so it's you can, your Pikachu di can die. Um, what the? What happened? Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, and Haunter yeah. has uh, Sucker Punch, but. Yeah. So. Uh, you you will always see a sucker punch from the second haunter on Eevee version, uh, because the only moves it has are sucker punch and uh, ghost moves. So it obviously won't use a ghost move against your Eevee. Uh, so you'll always take a little bit of jam damage there on that second haunter fight. Uh, uh. Do you see what Zeon just did? Yeah. So oh so no, Zeon so... made a little bit of a mistake here. Um, because whew, oh no, uh, okay, he was supposed this is gonna to be... go to the top floor. He's this gonna be not, bad. yeah, he's gonna not realize that. So uh, that I think hideout's not activated yet. Yeah, so yeah, you have to go and here. trigger. You have to trigger the cutscene where the tr the rival runs away from the ghost. Um, you have to go to the next floor of rival. Uh, Zeon did not do that, so he will get to hideout. Well, it almost, it almost looked it. like he thought about it for a second and but... we'll have to walk all the way back yeah um, it's gonna be a I did that game yeah yeah I did that when I did my first game uh if you're <laughs> it is a, a bit uncommon but if you are reading the text the the rival says maybe on a higher floor and it's the it's kind of the hint like hey you should go up a floor to get that last cutscene yeah and the unfortunate thing is the um the fly ability that Echi just picked up is only available after hideout. So it's not even like Xeon's going to make it to Celadon and then be able to fly back. Um, they'd have to basically run all the way back. Oh, it looks like oh, turning around. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, good. Okay. You'll have to walk back down manually because he uses an escape rope. But I mean, that's that's better, better than that's way better. <laughs> yeah, that's way better than uh, going all the way. Okay. Rival's still standing there. Yep. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Rival should prevent you from backtracking. <laughs> yeah, the game holds what, your hand in the... so many other ways. They should be like, "Hey, no, go up." Yeah, and that's what the Silco president does if you try to leave. Like he, fo he like forces you to. He's like, "Here, take the master ball." <laughs> All right. So Etchy's basically to the top of tower. Uh, we're gonna have essentially a repeat of the Jesse and James fight from Hideout, um, higher level. Um, and I believe in Pikachu, uh, you basically no longer want to do that Rhyhorn strategy. Uh, the ranges just don't work out in your favor. Yeah, not, uh, so we're gonna see a more standard anymore. fight. Um, generally, uh, one of the, a more recent addition, I believe, to the route is we're actually gonna have um, the Growlithe that's gonna become our ride Pokemon after Pokemon Tower um, as our second Pokemon here. And the objective is to have it die. Um, it will not gain experience while it's dead. Um, and so you both, you know, put it there as a target for safety and for the fact that it's level 19 and about to be gaining experience for catching level 40 plus Pokemon. Um, so it's sort of like a win-win by letting it die here. Um, of course, it only dies if it gets targeted. There we go. All right, perfect. See, the one time I tried this, my Pikachu got double targeted. <laughs> yeah, it's not as consistent as like the Jigglypuff strat, but it is generally this is how it goes now in in the pika version uh do you just delay or not at all uh get the firestone because my intuition would say if you firestone before getting to the next route the growlithe would be revived it's that old strat where you can use a rare candy as a revive because you gain uh you gain think... current HP. no so the the firestone was... actually does not revive it yeah which doesn't make sense i agree yeah, because it's, um, it's, it's not that way for the It should. Candies. It should, but it does not. All right, so finishing that up. So, yeah, this is this is the more standard way to get through the Jesse and James fight in Pikachu. Um, you can see it's four turns. It requires a few extra super potions, um, so it can be expensive to do. Um, but it generally works pretty well. Um, and... Another thing, I, I didn't actually see the catch, but looking at Etchy's catch tracker, um, did catch a Ghastly, which First is nice. Floor. That's Three. that's yeah. um, that's a nice extra Pokemon to get. Um, looking at the tracker, looks like he's got 54 planned, um, so could skip two of the Pokemon that are um, sort of eluding him at the moment. Uh, Grimer. So one of the things with a lot of these late game catches is a lot of them come in pairs. So you've got Grimer and Muck. Tentacool and Tentacruel and things like that. Um, so you generally, instead of skipping like one Pokemon at a time, you're generally skipping two. So being at 54 planned is nice because he could skip uh, both Grimer and Tentacool um, and get there. Um, and also has a little bit of leeway. Like uh, he currently has Psyduck planned, Psyduck plus Golduck, the, oh. Psyduck plus Golduck planned. Um, and if he just doesn't see one, he could just opt to catch Grimer instead. Uh, so there's a lot of options here for Etchy. Um, looking really, really good going into essentially the last catching section of the run. The flexibility is so massive in this part of the game because, yeah, these are your last catches. And the less you need, the more comfortable that you feel about it. Uh, most runners, I would think, would want to avoid Tentacool at all costs. It's mm -hmm. kind of like the last most reliable like spawning catch, uh, but water catches, you can't have your second Pokemon active. So this goes for Staryu as well. Uh, it just makes that catch rate a lot lower. And with Tentacool drifting from side to side, makes it even more difficult to hit an excellent throw on it. So Tentacool is kind of like your last ditch, like reliable. But if you're going in to this section and you can skip two of these, you know, paired Pokemon, Tentacool is gonna be the first to go. And you're saying things like, and I'm going to look at the tracker carefully here. You probably just need all but one of the following. Pidgeotto, Psyduck, Doduo. Uh, yeah, you need two out of those three. Uh, as yeah. well as Grimer. And then you'd make that yeah. three out of four. 
it's, and then you can so, skip Tentacool, and you and with Psyduck probably being the rarest on that route, you're probably saying, yeah, if I see a Psyduck, cool. If I don't, no big deal. Uh, yeah. Um, Pidgeotto is going to be like kind of a weird one be because Echi did catch that Route 2 Pidgey way, way back when, uh, but still has that option for Pidgeotto Pidgeot. Pidgeotto is probably maybe like the uh, most dangerous to controller catch because it also can drift side to side, so slightly lower catch rate at the same time. Um, but if you hit it with a Nana Berry, isn't too bad to catch. And again, with that, at this point, it's actually an Ultra Ball and a Great Ball. We don't go to double Ultra Ball because you only usually pick up eight Ultra Balls in total. Uh, there are five more you can pick up in Hideout, uh, though I did not see Echi uh, nor Quo pick up those uh, Ultra Balls. Looks like Quo is waiting for that ghastly. There it is. Two of oh, them. Oh, two of them. Nice. Yeah. Oh, so, Etiquette talked about way earlier, but um, Etchy hugged the wall to despawn the ride Pokemon, and then hugged the wall to skip that trainer. Uh, it has two, he has two Psyducks. Um, 39. Yeah, and an important one to dodge. It is the by far the easiest one to pull off. Uh, it's a very simple skip. Uh, but oh, at this so... point, we're depositing the Pikachu or Eevee, so you don't really have a main Pokemon right now. Uh, yeah, weird, weird, screen, right, weird kind of jank throw, but it on, worked out in Echi's favor. On close screen, Ghastly attacked in the circle still. Gut went, so that means that the Pokemon is about to run. Um, mm -hmm. Pokemon can run if you miss too many throws. Um, so luckily it went in, but it was about to run if it broke out. Yeah, and he was Not also me. lucky that there was another on screen anyways. Yeah, so even if... Ooh, Tower Cubone! Saw Tower yeah. Cubone on close screen. Never that is the it. second Tower Cubone, because I'm pretty sure there was one on Etchy's screen. Wow. You only Etchy get him when you don't need it. Tower Cubone optimally uh, in his last practice run. I think it was yesterday or two days ago, uh, where he didn't catch it in uh, Rock Tunnel, where it would take four levels to evolve. We can instead bank on a 1% spawn in Tower, and it is just one level away. So it is optimal. Uh, but you would never rely on it because it is one percent. Finding Doduo. That's the first time I've seen it. Like Tower Cubone caught. Uh, I believe Randall said he had one as well recently. But that's like the only two incident instances. I was I was watching my video on Barry, um, and I caught Tower Cubone there too. Just oh. saying. <laughs> Good old Barry. But we are seeing yeah, Eevee strats uh, on Zeon screen for hideout. Um, so, doing Eevee on this fight instead of changing up. Yeah, Eevee can have such an interesting hideout. There's like so many different ways. I think the like the best thing that can happen for the Eevee player is to just quite simply be level 28, because at that point you do learn Double Edge, uh, which can really help a ton of the fights. It can help in the Eradicate fight. It definitely helps for the Hypno fight. Uh, on that previous fight, it's like the Rattata Voltorb. You can just double edge twice. Uh, you just have to heal before and after. Uh, and then you also have an option to use double edge to save a turn on Giovanni as well. Uh, double edge is just massive for for Eevee, but it obviously requires getting to level 20 a, nice a bit earlier than you're used to. Um, oh, Silver Raz pick up there already, for Echi. Yeah, he already caught the He's going for it? Okay. Pidgeotto is uh, a here's the fairly safe catch. Yeah, so uh, it seems like Echi's pretty much in go mode, uh, to use randomizer terms. Um, basically, was not going to stop and look for anything, uh, but the fact that Pidgeotto did spawn, may as well turn around and catch it. Um, yeah, the only still... Pokemon he has left to catch is just Staryu and Grimer, and that yep. is it. Uh, the so Silver Raz is probably not necessary, but since he's got them, uh, he would... He's definitely going to use it on the Staryu, because again, one controller catches kind of demand at least the Raspberry usage. Mm -hmm. uh, so that should guarantee the catch with the Silver Raz on the Staryu coming up. So we didn't talk about it when it happened, and hopefully no one forgot. But in this game, we can set uh, natures of wild Pokemon we catch. Um, it rolls over when, it, or the effect cancels when it passes midnight. So you don't want to do a run where it'll pass over after you pass over into midnight once you set it but you go to the celadon 
uh, Pokemon Center, and you go talk to the Chancellor with the Abra, um, and you can set it so all the wild Pokemon are modest nature, which is very important for Star use or Star Me, um, since we'll be using that for the rest of the game. Who would forget that? Not me, I swear. Yeah, and who would forget to save Bill? Not you either. Yeah. When talking about someone skipping Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Pre so I, know, I know I know a lot of these I know a lot of these first round matches um might not be the closest. I mean you got record holder Echi going up against um players from pot two, pot three. So while I think that they're not gonna be maybe as close as the later round matches, do either of you think that there might be like some upsets uh possible in round one, just like looking at some of the other matches? I think um, Go ahead, Joker. You can go first. I was going to say, I think there probably could be some upsets. I think one of the, just looking at the, the actual matchups, I think a lot of the stronger pot two runners kind of drew the short end of the stick with some of the um, better pot one runners. I think if there were different matchups, we might see some more upsets there. Um, but I, I do think that from pot three to pot two, uh, there could definitely be some upsets. Uh, one of the things, uh, if you look at the bracket, uh, which you can see there in chat, um, there are a fair amount of people that are in pot three more so because they don't have a PB, uh, rather than their PB being a certain time. And, uh, there's definitely a couple of them. Uh, Furious is one of them who didn't have a PB for the bracket, but already has like a 313. Um, so like there, there's definitely some improvement, um, for some of those runners if they are interested in the game and stick with it. Um, so, uh, those will be interesting to see. Yeah, it depends if you consider it an upset, but I think Spider can beat me. Uh, so, <laughs> based well, on pot, just, it'd be an upset. That's probably, but... that's probably just because you're going to catch five Growlis on Route 6. <laughs> that's not happening. <laughs> All right, so if Etchy just... I was just going to say, Etchy just caught the star you. Um, an indication of how good the star you is, not an excellent indication, but an indication nonetheless, is the CP value. Uh, it could be anywhere from like 950 ish to 1150 ish. Um, and it looks like Etchies was a 1086, which is. Oh, should be decent. It's pretty it's on good. The plus side. The, the um, exact wait. average is 1062. Just just get um, an 1150 star, star you, and then you know it's good. Like, you just yeah, know exactly. it's good. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Because again, the CP value is just a mesh of all of the stats. So 1086 being above average could mean that you have amazing defense and amazing special defense. And as the game would say, not so good. Special Ooh, defense. A so it's just a it's just a it's just all a right. mesh of all those stats together. Uh, so we are gonna see on this screen when he starts to level up just exactly how good the star you is. Oh, it's and it is actually all right. cool. Is a special attack very good? Speed is a bit is, rough. Um, yeah. Will you outspeed gonna, one or both or none? Uh, I don't think both. He's, he's outspeeding Maybe one. Maybe one? I believe it's going to be a speed tie on the Rapidash at best. Yeah. Oh, wait, it doesn't matter oh. because he's three candy, right? No, uh, this might be a speed no, tie on Rapidash. This is going to be still. close to a speed yeah. tie, yeah. His, his okay. speed stat is quite low. It's near minimum. I, but the special attack is actually very high. So again, I only know the that two plus two uh, difference. Yeah. So he's. It's it's definitely a lot in one stat and taken away from another. So. I mean, the speed's not that bad. Like the speed is definitely not close to zero. It's probably around like twelve IV or so. Well, it's it's only gonna cost for the blade. Fight. Yeah, it's it's only gonna cost yeah. on the lane fight. Which as uh, we'll long see as the it, actual as as stat here one sec. Oh, yeah. It is one seventeen. So that that's yeah, a so that's speed right? high. So it might not even matter. It might not matter. Or he can uh, catch this Magmar. <laughs> or he's going to catch us Raticate. Oh, he, he does need the Raticate still. I didn't notice that on the tracker. Yeah, he's, got yeah. it, he's got it marked on his tracker, but... Oh, he must have just marked it, like, as he saw it. Yeah, we're we're seeing about, like, a 15-second delay from the actual stream. So... Oh, thanks, Darby. We'll level up before no, Starmie's Probably not going to level up before. 
Uh, looks like, uh, looks like based on chat, I didn't actually see it on screen. Quo caught an Eevee um, and just found uh, his Ponyta as well. So good looking there. Eevee. Well, at least doesn't catch three. <laughs> yeah, Eevee's well, just five percent spawn on this route. Oh yes, yeah, so we have turnarounds on. Oh, that was a that, that was a large Ponyta worth forty six hundred experience. Hey, we just got power of love on the Eevee. So, oh, was that on the screen? Yeah. Uh, so if you use your Pokemon enough, like give them items and stuff. Um, you get power of love, which could be a good and bad thing. I think it's mostly bad. Um, but you can, uh, they start doing turnarounds when they hit super effective moves, or you give them, is it also when you give them items? I don't remember. Um, uh, but at least, yep, like, it's, it's when you give so. them, um, when you give them healing items. Um, yeah. they'll be like, yeah, I like that. It, they'll also do a turnaround when they go into red bar. Uh, basically saying like, oh, I'm in a pinch and I might cry. And so you get a lot of flavor text when the friendship threshold hits, what is it, 154? Uh, 150. Yeah. Uh, that's there, when it's there's... noticeable. That's when you get the turnarounds. But Power of Love can happen at the lower friendship thresholds, which is like you can expel a status effect. Uh, you can live on one HP on any given hit. Uh, at the lower friendship, it's a 1% chance. Um, but at this 150 friendship value, it's about a 10% chance. Per. So you do see it every once in a while. Yeah, it's a it's a bit of an interesting thing. Uh, the friendship effects start around 150. I think it's exactly 150 for like the power of uh, the turnaround stuff. But there is a stat boost that you get at 153. So it ends up like those two are like almost the exact same, but not quite. So there's this. What's this? Uh... Graveler Rivaling strat for Giovanni. So on the Eevee side, this was kind of like the this was like the second iteration of this fight. We call this boom strat. Um the Persian only has like slash and fake out. So it's gonna have a hard time doing any damage to this Graveler. So you set up to plus four and then self-destruct. Uh and as long as you're level 25, it should be guaranteed to KO the Persian. Then you just bring out the Eevee and bouncy bubble the rival. Um, this ends up being a lot safer for a strat because, again, like, Slash can barely do any damage to this Graveler whatsoever. Uh, the current version of the fight uh, sets, up to, sets up Eevee to plus two, but Eevee could die uh, if you get Slash crits, uh, if it uses Slash instead of Fake Out. And you're trying to get two Sizzly Slides off because the Sizzly Slide burn will always have the damage the Persian can do. Uh, and critting through burn does not uh, reduce or does not like override the effect of it. It is always half. I yeah. thought Quill was going to hit that pick and dicker. <laughs> yeah, I, in fact, it looked like he got saved by the lure running out, giving him a chance to, to dodge the pick and dicker at the bottom of 17. So interesting thing about those trainers um all of them have one tile of vision so actually if quo had gone straight down there um it actually would have been fine absolutely do not like even knowing that i probably still would have gone in that similar movement pattern to avoid the the vision um but that is actually a bit safer than it looked all right so etchy um, through the Ted fight, uh, Ted is a notable fight because it was probably the worst fight in the run, uh, before we allowed two controllers. So when this game first came out, um, one controller and two controller were separate categories. Um, and that Ted fight was absolutely abysmal. Um, the electrode does about two thirds health to you. Um, and you have to use an X item to... Uh, KO it, and it also... Cool. Etchy, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, that... Uh, my heart actually skipped a beat. Hey, that's as, the trainer uh, you really into my that, into that trainer's vision. Oh! Mm, yep. That was a Kervis impression. That was really good. That was... Uh, uh, <laughs> listen, what, whatever you were saying, Etiquette, was really interesting. Yeah, no, it was not. Not compared really to that. <laughs> Etchy made a really interesting trade hey, of it's quiz time. It's also worth noting, Etchy has 47 Pokemon yep. going into lane. 
which is also incredibly high. You usually average about 44 or 45, and then you have your last couple evolutions. He's got almost every single evolution out of the way, except for Muck. Um, so going into this fight at 157, at 47, is incredibly fast. I would not be surprised if this is 259 pace. In oh, it round is. It has been for a while. <laughs> this is... This is where it really starts to become noticeable how insanely fast that Echi's run is. Tentacle. It's not moving for now. Dang, it didn't move at all. Lucky. Tentacle stinks, but got it done. I'm so cautious with the quiz. I spam B and like lose seconds because I'm too cautious. I don't want to hit the wrong, the wrong answer. Have we seen, have we seen a star yet on cool screen or was it just the tentacle first? Tentacle first. Tentacle first, yeah. Oh, look, it's the tentacle. Seeing tentacles on Route 10 is sad. It sure is. Could have been, could have been your team. Yeah, they could have put your TDs on this route. Ooh, no star you yet, and we're getting towards the bottom of the water. Oh, that's a car. Oh, there it is. Oh, there There's we go. One. Last second. Let's see. Let's see what the CP is. CP is uh, ten seventy-eight. Uh, ten seventy-eight, which okay. again isn't bad. Hopefully, well, hopefully it's not all a thirty-one attack IV. All right, so here's that, that speed tie though. for Etchy. Anyone? He wins the speed time. The rich I'm get stunned. richer. Yeah, rich get richer. So, okay. So, gentlemen, right. so, so, how do we right. nerf Etchy for the rest of the tournament? Well, okay. Uh, I, I just, I want to, <laughs> I want to make an observation is what I want to do. Huh? So, okay. Etchy's current fastest time in Eevee is a 25846. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, it's currently two Pokemon ahead of that time. So has 47 instead of 45 um, yeah. and is a minute 20 behind time wise. So okay. using the 30 seconds per catch, uh, looks like he's about 20 seconds behind a 258. Okay. So this is a pace. Do you, do wow. you have any idea what his? Uh, All right, one his, second. Uh, I'm just going to I'm just going to tag switch uh, PSR <laughs> hype runs. Oh, okay. So close star me star you, man. The special attack is something. I'm assuming yeah, something not like good. Eighty six at forty eight or oh. three six or something. Okay then, never mind. We'll see when he when he learns the moves. You have to candy before evolving. Um, the star you to learn hydro pump. It's not a huge deal if you don't learn hydro pump, but you would rather learn it. Didn't teach skull, or did, was that earlier? Must have been before the candy. Must have been, yeah. Um, so almost a better comparison. Uh, Etchy's about thirty seconds ahead with the same number of Pokemon um, of the Pikachu record. Which is a two fifty nine forty one. So wow. same Pokemon count. Wow. Thirty seconds ahead. So why don't we just like have Etchy do once the only runs from now on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. When's that I was, tournament? I was next? thinking. I was thinking That's about this tournament. like the last couple of weeks because since round one has the does have a pretty wide like uh, skill disparity. Uh, you would think that like the the pot one runners might feel like they're less at risk going for risky strats, if that makes sense. Um, because we've done a lot of work in the last month of being like, how do we make these almost like tournament safe strats? So think like Lance and Champion, the runs that could critical hit you at the end. Like if you're, if you're not just gonna like save in front of them, which will lose a couple seconds, what are the other ways you can do that? How are the What's other the ways you can do the fight? That would just be like perfectly safe. However, do you think that like runners like Etchy, who are probably looking at Quo's screen and saying, "Okay, well, I got like an eight-minute lead. 
like, do I even have to do any of these safe strats? Or can I just go for a record PB run right now, knowing that, like, if he gets crit on Lance, he just goes right back into the Elite Four and might just win? Do you think that a lot of pot one runners might go in with that mentality? I think it depends on when their race is. This being the first race, you have no idea what the rest of the... You know, you have no idea what the rest is going to look like um, when it comes to, you know, how everyone else is going to perform. Um, the other thing is, I think if Echi is two minutes behind where he is now, he does not do anything necessarily risky in the end game and just tries to get an incredibly good pot one time for round two. Uh, but the fact that he's quite literally on both PB and record pace, like, it's really hard to not want to do that even with the race on the line, you know, so to speak. Um, I, th I think the buffer is enough that you just go all out. And if something goes wrong, then you just go right back in. Yeah. Would, would you go for, would you just go all out if you had a three double O pace run going? Um, Probably not. Not that I'm not that I'm taking notes uh, with my competition <laughs> or anything. Just, uh, it, just curious. It, it it heavily depends on the situation. Um, if it's a round one race, probably not. Um, I would value the better standing for round two than I would the potential PB. Um, and I'm kind I'd of only do the it opposite. If it was... I I would go all out for like a three double O pace run even if it was during the tournament uh especially in round one i think i might play it safer if it were like if i were like up against you and i had a really good run going i think i would be like oh i just want to make round four uh and get a 301 instead of getting a pb and risk it i'd only do it for record not that yeah i would, I, I would only do it for record i think if record. i would do it for a sub three i think i don't think i would do it for a three double o i would do it for sub three I don't have to worry about it though, because I'm not good. Because <laughs> Joker's just waiting for his moment when we do the AOP tournament after this. I don't. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, lose because Tango would show up. Staying on that same vein, and Etiquette and I had this discussion earlier. Uh, what do you think will be the cutoff for Pot One next round? I, AKA, like, wh what's going to be like the top six times? In round the one. Top six times? Well, um, the top one time is going to be a 258, it looks like. <laughs> 257 somehow? Um, hold on. I think top six times will be like 306 is the highest. That's, that's what I'm saying. And, th and I was thinking 305. Um, I could see that the too. Top six times. And then yeah, what do you think I... would be the cutoff for making? round two because how that's going to work is that we have the 13 matchups all 13 winners will automatically qualify for the round two upper bracket and then we're going to take five more like top runs of like the second or third places so what do you think um, will be the cutoff time there some 310 wow okay Ooh, that's pretty fast I think we were we were looking people. at the bracket and the 18th seed is a 318 right now. Or was it okay. 315? 315 or 318? 315. 315. Yeah, because I was thinking 318 would be around that like top like wait, uh, so so top 18 wait so eight, 18 people make the second yeah. round 18 people well, will make the upper bracket upper of the bracket second round, upper bracket and okay. then everybody else will go to the lower bracket since this is a double elimination okay tournament. maybe 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 not so 310 then uh <laughs> maybe like 314 okay all right so Echi is making his way to uh, Sylphco. Um, this is a probably the most variable part of the run that isn't the catches. Um, so there are two main fights that we're going to be looking at here. Uh, the first one is the very first battle uh, against Blue. Um, you will see runners mainly do two different strategies here. 
Um, I haven't been looking at what Echi's party is. I think he's doing Rapidash, but I might be wrong. Um, runners can either opt to do the safer strategy, which involves using a Doduo, or Dodrio rather, um, as your partner for uh, the blue battle here, and you would X attack and drill peck. Um, the other option that you can do, uh, which is faster, um, mostly because of a prior fight, is you can uh, use Rapidash as your partner and do an X special and Fire Blast. Fire Blast being 80% accurate. Um, or 85, one of the two. I don't know. Um, 85, I think. I think it's 85. Hydro Pump this, is 80. This is one of the fights that really benefited from two controller, right? Yes, this was this was like the main fight that's like, all right, two controller is awesome here because Starry, there is like one type combination that Starmie cannot hit for neutral and it's grass psychic Pokemon. And guess what this is? It's a grass psychic executor. Um, so we would have to do like switch strats. You would like lead. I think we were still doing Aerodactyl at the time. You'd lead Aerodactyl, you'd crunch, and then you'd switch out to Starmie in order to um, handle the Charizard, or you'd go for like a Rock Slide or something like that with your Aerodactyl. Um, but here we can just use two main Pokemon. Uh, it looks like Echi does have the Dodrio. Absolutely respect that. Um, the Rapidash is more of, for me personally, Rapidash is more of a I didn't see a Doduo kind of strategy than a, uh, you know, something I wanted to do every run. Yeah, Kalo Runners would be well versed in the accuracy of Fire Blast, which yeah. is what you would have to land as a Rapidash partner. And I like this and too, skipping the X special. I definitely the see crit. Oh my God. in the chat, and we got a raid from Sparkle. I know we looks got like, some uh, some Kalo enjoyers out there. Looks like Quo taught Scald after Blaine, I saw. I think it was probably a mistake, not on purpose, yeah. Yeah, and then Zion hit the uh, side of Trainer, unfortunately. But I had Gasly to at least beat it instead of taking forever. <laughs> All right, and here is the second fight here in Silphco. Um, the most variable fight in the entire run, really. Um, this Sorry, is Archer. Interrupt you for a sec. Will Quo get the correct trash cans first try? I sure <laughs> hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but yeah, this on. is the Bye. this is the Archer true double, meaning that you don't control both Pokemon on your side of the field. The uh, the rival AI has it for Cubone. And because there are so many different AIs, there's basically three AIs in you. For some reason, each turn in this fight takes a long time to load. It's like saving a lot of data, but it's loading a lot of data. All right, um, so we got, got protect. A weird, got a weird first turn version because the Electro did self-destruct, uh, but protect from the muck is kind of weird. You want to target the muck first and always. It does have minimize, so you don't want to ever see that as uh, as a move on the field. Yeah, the, there are three main ways that first turn can go. You can either get Protect and Self-Destruct, like Echi got here. Uh, you can get No Protect and Self-Destruct, which is the best version. And you can also get No Protect and Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt uh, doing a ton of damage. That defense Ooh. drop is really Ooh. not good. That's really That's bad. not good. What, um, what do you prefer, besides like the optimal one, do you prefer Muck Protect, Electro Self-Destruct, or do you prefer uh, no bug protect with Thunderbolt from Electro. I like Thunderbolt as long as I don't get paralyzed and as long as it booms turn two. <laughs> yeah. So in it's that good. version of the fight, you typically get a four turn because for whatever reason, the Cubone does like to boomerang. Right, there's a bone meringue. That's uh, really good. With the Electrode uh, and the... The Sucker Punch, kill, no, the Sucker Punch kills. Yeah, he's oh, got the yeah, minus one gonna, defense. Yeah, so Sucker Punch is going to do almost about 45 or 50 points of damage in this situation. So is this, five, does this is potentially, potentially five turn? Uh, Echi said this could potentially be a six turn. Um, yeah, he's, so might have he to has heal to heal again. again. That defense drop was... Yeah, that's that's, uh, awful. that's very, very scary. It's, it's also very random unlikely. which... Yeah, it's it's random which Pokemon comes out second. Um, so Ooh, oh, the Raticate okay. going down there is good. Um, that was weird because he got protect from this Weezing, which could have delayed him another turn, but very lucky to get the Bone Meringue off on the uh, with Weezing on the uh, Raticate. It's Ooh. it's also unfortunate with Bone Meringue being a ninety percent accuracy move. It's like you see it and you're like yes, and then it says yeah. it missed, and you're like no. <laughs> All right, there Weezing didn't protect there. That's good. Um, but yeah, Credit it is good measure. It is random which Pokemon comes out second. So the fact that he got uh, the Golbat out second instead of the the Weezing 
um, meant that crunch with defense drop could happen. That's a really unfortunate turn of events. Still on an amazing pace run, um, but that does definitely hurt a little bit. Do you remember what his record run had? Three times? Uh, I currently have it synced up. Um, his record run finished a dex entry on this exact fight right now. Okay. So it's like oh, he's basically tied. It's like seconds behind. <laughs> All right. Um, so after that archer fight, you do get a free heal. Um, so don't have to worry about uh, PP management at that point, And you also don't have to worry about how much damage you took on that fight. Also, if you somehow came out of that fight paralyzed, which is totally possible because there's a lot of things that can paralyze you, um, you don't have to worry about that anymore. And then we're going on to Jesse and James um, for a fourth time. Uh, and this is by far the easiest one. Um, there's one thing that can go wrong that I won't say because I don't want to be yelled at for commentator curse. I'll curse at you. You can get thunderbolted and paralyzed. All right. Wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> you had just had to say it. Um, now, in this situation, it is technically a little bit more optimal to have the uh, Rapidash as the partner because you can use it. Uh, you can use it stomp on the Weezing and try to get a flinch off to also further mitigate that chance that Joker just mentioned. Uh, could also save you a heal turn as well, because if you get Thunderbolted into the Starmie, you just have to heal on the second turn. It'll just Thunderbolt barring them any, for you. Barring any uh, paralysis shenanigans. Not gonna happen. No way. It's pretty unlikely to happen. I'm I'm having such a also fun time just watching Xeon catching an Eevee on Eevee version on Route 17. Just just throwing that out there. It's gonna evolve the Flary the Flary. Oh, right, okay. You get the Thunderbolt, but no paralysis. That's pretty good. <laughs> I was just um, like, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. <laughs> you'll, you'll you'll see Etchy heal here. Um, you want to basically go directly from Sylph Co to uh, Sabrina's gym without having to menu. Um, so by going into this next fight at full health, should get fake out, can get slash, which is a little unfortunate. I got I got slash today. In yeah. Fact. Um. So it uh, you know, you definitely want to go into this at full health. So respect that. Um. And then yeah, this uh this Giovanni fight is the easiest of the three Giovanni fights as well. Um, this is a simple X special and then sweet. It's a, it makes a big difference when we have kind of our big main for the run. Um, and that's consistent with both versions is that after you get all the plot finished, uh, you switch over to that Starmie, which is usually on the order of 13 levels higher or so compared well, to the, the traders. Game. The traders, and, and the trainers up. also go 13 levels higher because Jesse and James is 32. Uh, at the top of tower, and then Ted is 45 when you fight him. So it's a big jump in level. So to be able to access a Starmie or a Staryu mm -hmm. in the case of the catch uh, that is also 13 levels higher makes a big, yeah. big difference. Yeah, and it's it's not just the the level of your opponents. The um, requirement to enter Sabrina's gym is to have a Pokemon that is level 45. Um, and so even if you were to use the Eevee and Pikachu through this whole section, you'd probably be like 36 or 38 by now. Like, you wouldn't be 45, 45. which is what you need to enter the next gym. Yeah, but Starmie is so good, not be not just because of its typing, which is Water Psychic, only weak to uh, three different things in the whole game, being Grass, Electric, and Dark, and there are no Dark-type Pokemon in Gen 1. Uh, and then the the first two gyms that you take on the electric and grass gyms are super low level, so they're not a problem. Um, but on top of that, Starmie does learn Thunderbolt, which is absolutely massive. Um, not just for this run, but in any Gen 1 or Gen 2 run, having access to Thunderbolt is easily the best move in the entire game. There are a ton of water Pokemon, and a lot of them are very bulky but can be easily disposed of with Thunderbolt. So adding that to your coverage just makes a huge difference. And no one's even close to what Starmie can produce, uh, especially in this run. It's just that one Executor that is that one little, one little speed bump. 
So do you get the candy first or do you get lapis first? I go candy first. Candy I first. first. Wow, I actually did not go candy first. That's why I don't have a 258. <laughs> do you also do you know another reason why you don't have a 258? It's because you don't fury attack rival four. So true. <laughs> I have to go back and see what he did there. It, it was just one of those simple like, oh, you have to hit up to go to poison jab. So let me hit up again. Like it, people do that all the time. That typically right. happens to me in the menu more not more often than not. Uh, yeah. One example is when you come out of tower, it's just a simple left press to get to the escape rope. But if I heal, I'm in that bag menu, and then I hit left A, but it's just the. It's the Pokemon box, and it's like, ah, oh, I just lost a lot of time opening Dude, that box for no reason. Do people move the healing items in any percent, like, in the menu? So, yeah. for the healing items, it's mostly just the potions. Like, you'll swap Not, the super potions uh, up no, to no, sorry. I mean, the hypers. I mean, like, with the Pokemon box, you swap the medicine. Like, Oh, no, no, no. Oh, we don't do people that. People don't typically do that. The only, the only, like, other menu swapping I've done... Um, and this actually happens in AOP, is that I'll move the lures back over to that left slot, uh, just next to the map icon, because the fossil is occupying that slot. So I'll just switch the fossil and the lures over. Um, and then when they're, they're, in fact, you might see this with Etiquette, who won't sell the fossil even in any percent. Uh, I've tried that once. And then I've noticed that I end up in that same situation, and I do just slide those lures back over. It's a pretty quick switch, but it helps with my muscle memory, just getting that lure in the same spot. So just really quick, you can see on Xeon's screen, uh, the vision of those trainers does not exist. All right. Just wanted to mention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah. So Etchy just did the final shop of the run. Uh, it's where you buy the, the, the rest of your X items, um, ton of X special attacks. Uh, X special defenses and X speeds uh, because you don't need any of those in the first half of the run, um, as well as a bunch of hyper potions. Um, and then conditionally, you can buy some full heals. I think Etchy skipped the full heals, uh, which is a good play here uh, because I believe he still has a decent amount of status healing items. Uh, depending on how screwed over you get in the early part of the run, you may or may not want to buy those full heals. Um, the other reason to buy the full heals uh, is something I personally like which is um, the ability to not necessarily care what status you are, just like do the same menuing to get to the, the status items uh, that you need to heal. Uh, but it's really I, you, up to you preference. You would probably put the full restores in that like second slot. Yeah, I don't do it so much anymore. I used to. Um, Was that perfect yeah. teleports? Those were perfect teleports. I always mess up at least two. Yeah, so how the teleporters work is that you want to angle your character to aim for the center of the teleporter, and they'll walk straight on to the teleporter. But if you come at a goofy angle, uh, your character will stop, shuffle their feet to angle at it, and then just walk on. It loses about, what, a second or so? Uh, yeah, it's and a... there's obviously a ton of teleporters in this part of the game. Yeah, the other thing is if you approach it directly from the top, um, there is a second little shuffle of feet that happens if you approach it from anywhere other than the top uh, because your character wants to face down in order to do the teleporting. So um, you'll see sometimes like when you have the option of approaching from either the top or the left, uh, you'll see runners approach it from the top to try and skip that extra shuffle as well. All right, so um, pretty straightforward fight here um, for Etchy. It is two X specials and an X speed. Um, and generally speaking, you get the Mr. Mime is going to use. Uh, we have a shiny on Xeon screen, by the way. Ooh. Oh damn! <laughs> also, that was some. It's that red. was some. Uh, that was status lag. That's some status lag. Yeah, I was. Mind. I was going to get to that, but the shiny uh, threw me off. That's the same. Um, that's the same shiny you got in your GDQ run. It is. It is. Um, is, it, is it also the same shiny that you grinded up for candy in the GDQ? It is. Run? It is. <laughs> 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 um. But yeah, so uh, the, the Mr. Mime typically will set up a light screen. Uh, so you want to basically stall out those light screen turns anyways. So all those extra X items are not bad. Uh, and then you two shot the Mr. Mime with Scald. Uh, Scald is a 30% chance to burn and burning that Mr. Mime generally is not useful. Um, it can be useful because that Mr. Mime can be a two shot range. Um, but what you saw there is a little bit of this lag 
where um, the game is basically waiting for the animation to finish before it processes the turn. So, what uh, how scary is it if you crit the mine? Um, if you crit the mime, it's not too, too bad, because that generally means you didn't take a lot of damage from it. Um, and I believe the Alakazam's worst move against you is Nightshade. So you have to be above, like, 44 health, I think it is. Yeah, that's about right. And Psychic does about the same, maybe a little bit less. Uh, and in that situation, you can just YOLO a Hydro Pump uh, to see if you... It's It's not a particularly good range, but there's no risk of missing it. Because if you miss, the light screen is down the next turn, and then you're just uh, using Scald anyways. So yeah, if you if you crit one shot that Mr. Mime, you just YOLO a Hydro Pump at no risk uh, to see if you might save a turn. Because you all never right. know, you might double crit. Yeah. Um. All right, so Etchy just depositing his whole party. Wait. What was it? 10.55, so okay. kind of Pretty about average. average. Maybe just a little bit behind. Um... Yeah, so Echi just uh, deposited his whole party. Um, at this point, Echi has the 50 Pokemon required to enter Koga's Gym. Uh, you generally finish up your evolutions between Sylphco and uh, Sabrina, and then there are two gift Pokemon that you'll pick up, the Lapras and the Porygon, uh, that become unlocked after you beat Sylph. So um, picking those up, getting to 50, um, depositing everything because you don't want them to be gaining passive experience, um, and then moving on. So... The uh, gift hey. Pokemon are very, very fast to acquire. Um, it's quite simply because you only get the Dex Entry screen. Uh, you don't have to go through, like, the Catch animation, uh, which is actually the biggest time sink for most of the Pokemon. So that's why getting the Magikarp, uh, the Lapras, and the Porygon are all absolutely worth it. And I believe the three fastest Pokemon yes. in the entire run. Did anyone see how close Archer went? I did not. I did not. Unfortunately, I made a mental note to check in when he was on his way to uh, Saffron, and then just completely got distracted. <laughs> well, the shiny there kind of been a shiny, shiny on somebody yeah, else. There, there was a shiny, shiny on screen. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is uh, Ace Trainer Caden. This is one of the other real gym leader. fights. The Absolutely, real the real gym leader. Um, everyone in this gym has both Toxic and Protect. It is awful. Um because you can just RNG lose turns to protect. Uh, protect turn one from Caden is phenomenal. It basically makes this fight absolutely free. The other things that can oh, happen nice. are minimize, um, which obviously means you can miss, as well as moon blast, which can drop your special attack. So you can get into this weird combo of like toxic and minimize and drop my special and all this other stuff. So uh, it's good you to see. Get... Sorry, go on. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, I was, it's oh. good to see uh, the, that muck go down turn two. <laughs> yeah. If you see Toxic, do you ignore the Toxic? Because I ignore the Toxic for that muck. Always That heal. muck specifically. I that muck specifically, I, I, I specifically... I always heal going. because you... I heal on Koga. You're, you're risking the same thing either way. Because even if you're... If you try to hit through, you could just get Protect. Um, and... The, well, the like, double yeah, protect is just, like not. I think you could die like, in a situation. Well, <laughs> you say that, and I Starmie, have Starmie. Do you see the Starmie? Oh no, that's a Starmie. See right? Starmie and an optional. Yeah, that optional I think sucks. Just like just a just lot. so everybody knows, catching Starmie is not viable, and the reason for that is that it doesn't know Psychic. Oh yeah, this slow bro is awful. Just go to the Psychic TM house. It'll be fine. What's the worst that can happen? Yeah, but, right, so but Koga's not as, yeah, Koga's not as scary as Kaden because he does not. Oh, Ooh. wow. Uh, he what? does not have Minimize, but he does have Explosion. Gonna... Uh, explosion is very rare to see. It's kind of. It's did super get, nice. It's good. He it's did good. not get a turn one, which is the optimal situation. Uh, but because that uh, Echi's at lower health now, Koga is going to be more favored to not protect and to go for a kill. It's not guaranteed. He doesn't have like perfect kill AI. But he might be more incentivized to not. Yo, shiny in battle! Didn't... Shiny in battle! And we, <laughs> and we didn't see that. Uh, we so far have not seen protect out of the Venomoth or the Golbat, and we'll see on the on the Muck right here. All right. Uh, no protect. So... so one turn off of a perfect Koga that ended up being a five-turn Koga fight, 
AKA the rich get richer. Well, the okay, so I was, I was gonna say, run. um, somebody in chat asked, uh, is Etchy still on PB pace or the true double destroy it? The true double did destroy it. That Koga saved it. Um, currently back ahead of PB, um, by four seconds. Yeah, Koga ends up on average being like a seven turn fight. Uh, so if you see a six turn fight, you're just like, okay, I saved a little bit of time. That ended up being a five turn fight. And if not for Toxic turn one, would have been like the legendary four turn fight where you get explosion on your setup turn. Uh, Kaden can also like, can influence that as well. And I believe he did not get protect from the Beedrill meaning that he spent a total of eight turns in the gym. Uh, he did get Protect from Beedrill. Okay, then yeah, he got nine turns in the gym, which is nearly perfect. Absolutely. So here's a minor difference between PK and Eevee and catching Coughing, uh, which is worse than Grimer. Yep. Because it will move. Although this one didn't. How rare is that? <laughs> I think that's rare, right? That is pretty is rare. Um, double Great Balls, uh, which is better than... You know, having a Pokeball in slot two, but unfortunately it broke out. Oh. Well, only Pokeballs left now. <laughs> I know the feeling. Oh, and then Jukes. Just oh, and that didn't even count as an excellent? Oh, the game I don't robbed know how. him. Yeah. The game robbed him. This is the last thing he needs to catch. So what kind of risks do you think we're going to see from Echi in the rest of this run with this being so close to record pace? Um, you got to anticipate that you're going to see Pump on Samuel at minimum. 1C Naomi. That, it's just like, it's still, that. that's like the one risk where it's, you, you could almost just argue no matter what, I'll never do this. No, I do it now. Um, he might. I don't. I. That's the one where I don't think I could speak for Echi or any of the runners. Um, I think Naomi is just like the biggest risk. Uh, if you're taking as like as many as you are, um, you could do things like well, we won't see it here. You could one see rival five, but you can only do that if you a outspeed the Raichu and b only if you're playing on Eevee version because I was gonna Raichu say what Raichu. Tokyon. What ride you? <laughs> so you won't see that uh, here, but you can you can start using more hydro pumps. Um, with kind of the main one being Samuel, Naomi is an option. Uh, I think with how high special attack we're gonna see, these risks aren't even gonna be risks. You'll see plus four for Lorelai instead of plus six, uh, but that'll still constitute a hydro pump on her Jinx. Yeah, Giovanni's gym is. It's hey, got that. Star you? It's oh got, no! Got... Okay, that star you. <laughs> oh, I've seen worse. Ah, I've seen worse. It's bad. I've seen worse. That's that's min speed. You were talking about min speed earlier. Eighty-eight <laughs> oh. speed is not min. This is. <laughs> that is bad. Bad star. You. Yeah, for Giovanni's gym, there's there's two risks. There's one, um, you can hit this Hydro Pump on this next trainer, which is Samuel, uh, which we will be seeing. And then two, there's nothing you can really do about it if you are going for a record attempt. Uh, Giovanni's Doug Trio lead will always outspeed Starmie. And if it crits Earthquake, that could be um, one of the nails in the coffin. Uh, you will see a lot of runners to controller fight Giovanni as an extremely safe way to handle Easy. the fight. But yeah, Easy. one Hydro Pump down, one Hydro Pump hit. Hey, just ha just pump just pump your Starmie full of quick candies and you'll outspeed the Doug Trio. So true. I don't even think that's possible. I think With the quick candies it is. Agatha. With the quick candies it is. Yeah, but how many quick candies do you have? Well, yeah, say. yeah, the silence says a lot, doesn't it? You can get him somehow, just not with his route. 
You know, maybe we'll uh, learn how to incorporate can quick candies in our, into the run to make it better. <laughs> I was also gonna say, like in this section, uh, we fight the black belt, even though it is more difficult to talk to him, because his graveler does not have protect. The um, the other trainer has a sand slash, and it has protect, so that's why we opt to fight. Oh, he's two C. Oh, we are gonna see a two control. All right, fight for I Giovanni. completely okay. respect this. So I. Th I thought I had noted this um, in the menuing here, but I did not see an X defend. Uh, from Etchy. It's hard to see. We don't actually have like the highest quality uh, low latency stream here. So I was just like, wait a second. I feel like he's missing an item and that ended up being it. So Did you don't forget? have to buy the X defend. No, if well, you just, if you know you're going to two controller this fight, you can skip buying that item. So you're just saving like four seconds um, in order to do the strat. So Earthquake can never kill Starmie in a double controller fight because it is only 75%. Right, and Rapid Ash went down. And you want to see Rapid Ash go down to mitigate that double turn. There might still be a little bit of lag because for some reason the camera retains this wide angle even though you have no second Pokemon on the field. And it might take an extra second or so on some of the turns, uh, yeah. like what we're seeing here. Um, but so... it still ends up being very viable in order to say, hey, I'm not even risking Giovanni in this case. Absolutely, yeah. And the, the astute observation in chat might be like earthquake is obviously going to kill a rapid ash right um the reason why we're like oh yes it went down is because rapid ash can live with power of love um rapid ash does have um quite a bit of a friendship boost uh one of the ways that you can gain friendship is by having it quote unquote out of its pokeball as you are walking around and because rapid ash is our ride pokemon it's been out of its poke uh pokeball uh so it's been gaining friendship it's about a 10 percent chance to um live there on one hp if it does live it's about a 20 second time loss um but the benefit is that uh you're gonna see etchy actually have to menu here to revive the rapid ash because you want a two controller the next fight as well um so you'd be able to like heal in battle um you'd be able to uh you know have your rapid ash already alive and things like that so uh it is it's not that bad but it does waste some time so so here you're going to see the re reviving of rapid ash um and to be quite honest didn't lose that much time compared to his pb um his pb just finishes the teleporters now and that's like two seconds <laughs> yeah, barely did his pb one c naomi or two c that I don't know. Let me see if I can uh, two C. Okay. Which I sure hope I think, he does. I I'm almost I think he's positive TCA. because if based, he's if, based, yeah, on, based on, on the TCA, Geo body fights, yeah, I don't think he's, he's gonna risk Naomi because Naomi is an even bigger risk than just the one controller Giovanni fight itself. Um, I don't think we'll see anything too. Uh, out of the ordinary, it'll really just come down to how he wants to play the final three fights. Uh, Agatha, Lance, and Champion are just notorious for being kind of the three most dangerous fights in the game anyways, which is fitting for them being the last three fights in the game. Um, they're just simply those fights where it's like, hey, just don't get crit and everything is fine. Um, but since you give Lance and Champion so many turns to crit you, happens more often than you'd like. So that'll be interesting to see if he does do these two controller strats. Uh, it does lose, at most, like, 20, 25 seconds per fight. Um, Good Caden so for quality. Uh, it's not per oh, fight. It's it's like 30 seconds total that it loses. 30 total. Yeah. Well, it's mostly it's for, on Lance. For Quo. I was going to say, two controlling Agatha does feel like it loses maybe, like, 20 seconds around the order of that. And then Lance is, like, another 25. Uh, yeah. Champion, it's not that much unless the second controller lives then that's like another 20 seconds so it really could be as much as a full minute of time loss um but in like the most optimal setting it could be like 25 seconds but we'll see how i mean if he wants to go for record um i think that's something he would consider yeah i think but, but getting past giovanni feels very important especially in a race setting because if you do die to Giovanni, um, and this being a race, he would have to go back and try again. 
What's weird about it is that the gym orientation it changes because the first trainer you fight is standing farther forward and it would force you to go the long way around the so, gym, like the intended way. And you would have to fight two optionals back on your way to fight Giovanni a second time. So you actually don't have to do that. That's in order to exit the gym. Um, you actually, a quote unquote, like optimal way to do the fights would actually be to fight that first trainer from behind, purposely die to Samuel, go back in, and the first trainer will be have have been pushed up and you can sneak behind him onto the teleporters. Like um, on it's the not actually. Yeah. So it's not actually faster because you're only skipping one fight that you have to go into anyways to die. Um, but that is something that if you happen to die to that fight, like to the Samuel fight, um, you can go through and actually be able to skip the fight altogether. OK, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think, uh, reading chat, Echi said, can't one see Geo, no X defense. Um, I don't know mm -hmm. if it was that a, mistake, like a mistake, um, because so the reason I think it might be a mistake. So typically for any percent in Pika, um, the strategy is to buy an X defense in pewter. Um, in the very first shop, you buy an X defense and you basically keep it the entire run. And one of the nice things about it is that fills up an item slot for God menu that we talked about, you know, back like an hour into the run. Um, however, you can't buy burn heals in that case. And I think Etchy probably opted to buy a burn heal in pewter, foregoing the X defense, wanting to buy the X defense in saffron, and then just two hours later forgot to buy the X defense in saffron. Right. That's my guess. Uh, but it looks like what it is one scene Naomi. Oh, let's go. Naomi. This is uh this is such a dangerous fight. So you have to hit a hydro pump, you have to not get sucker punched, and you have to uh hit the range sometimes. Now, Etchy's star is pretty good. So I probably doesn't have much of a range, but we still have an 80% hydro pump to hit. And we still have to not get sucker punch. It looks Wait, like sucker punch su won't kill. Wait, you mean, you mean crunch? No, I sucker punch. Okay, he got it. No, he it got is it, sucker though. punch. That Kangaskhan has sucker punch, which is a priority move. And it does as much damage as crunch. So it can just outright two shot you before you even get a hydro pump off. Yep. That happened to me I... last time I tried to one see the fight. Never heard that before. And that's why this fight is so dangerous as a one controller. Because if she just chooses Sucker Punch turn two, you don't even have a chance to hide. Oh, so so this tournament is the NMS no mount skips. Um, yes. So that trainer we just fought, you can skip by doing some weird thing where you like zip past the uh, sight line of the trainers. Um, you can do it for all four of these fights um, because because we have Rapid Dash. It also works with Aerodactyl. Um, bragging yeah, but... i was the first per i was the first person in the world to do <laughs> all four with rapid dash nice that's my brag this yeah. is true yeah it, not not trainer, in a row yeah these traders have 25 pixels of vision and the speed of both rapid dash and aerodactyl is about 26 pixels per frame uh so it ends up being a sub pixel perfect trick to be able to skip them but you do need like third party joy cons because you need like perfect cardinal direction movement to make it work uh and such well, and for such. consistency so, you can do yeah, it with forget. regular joy cons you can you can just yolo just it, but it there's no way to do it consistently but since this yeah. tournament has introduced a lot of newer players there are i mean i would go as far to say as like only four people in this whole tournament have even like done the mount skips route consistently enough and that mm -hmm. might even be a stretch. Um, so for so many new players, this is a no mount skip run. Uh, it's going to be way more accessible for everyone to just do it in kind of a uh, quote unquote like glitchless way. Not that it's a glitch. It is just like taking advantage of the hitboxes. Yeah, it was discovered by Cruel, right? Yep. Cruel did Cruel? the first one, but we didn't understand it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we thought someone... it had to do with the geometry around it. Yeah, so uh, we also the first have one to was Dawson. Um, we also have to mention real quick, because yeah. it's going to come up in a second, that while we're not skipping the four, tr the four required trainers, we do still do a skip. It is known as Alexa skip, and you actually have to do it unmounted. So this still counts as a skip. This one we've known for a while, and it is just abusing that thin trainer vision, and you're going to see 
Etchy dismount the rapid ash in the corner and just squeeze right underneath this trainer. Perfect. Easy as can be. But so, so that um, is a, Dawson, that is a trainer skip, but it's not a mount skip. Yeah, Dawson was the first one, which is the last fight we're doing, um, and then someone discovered it on the juggler with the hypno that Etchy just fought prior. Um, so once that second skip was found, we kind of um, knew like it's possible. It wasn't just to do with the geometry of where Dawson was, like in a tight area. Um, we figured it had to do something with ride Pokemon, so I tried for hours. Um, and eventually got it on all of them. Naomi was the first, I'm like, we could skip Naomi, right? And then I did it, and then I wasn't recording, and I was like, oh no, I'm not recording it! <laughs> had to do it again. Alright, um, so, missing that Hydro Pump there was super painful for Echi, uh, because he got put to sleep with Lovely Kiss. Um, had the healing items for it, so it's not a big deal, but, uh, unfortunately, his health's looking a little bit low. Uh, the next fight has a Lickitung that has Power Whip, uh, which does a fair amount of damage. But even if you can live the Power Whip, you also have to live the Blastoise's Aqua Jet um, afterwards. So I don't know exactly what his star is like, but he might have to heal out of battle here, which is a bit unfortunate, in addition to losing the turns on fight on, on the How, fight. How's his uh, pace? Um, two seconds behind now. And now more because of the menu. Yeah. Um, um, I don't think I've yes. seen this happen, but you can miss this rock and go in the hole, which is painful because you have to do a Luxus skip again. You've missed this rock? I did in the AOP run, yeah. We don't talk about it. Yeah, so you, you'll you'll see um, Dawson is that trainer right above Echi right now. Uh, so when we're talking about, like, oh, the geometry around it, so... The, the path that's being blocked right now by the boulder, um, that path is one tile wide, and so you're going to end up dismounting the Rapidash and then remounting the Rapidash on the other side because there becomes enough space. And so for almost a year, we thought that the skip was possible because you would go from not being mounted to being mounted, and we were thinking like, oh, maybe there are some like iframes where you know, as you're mounting, you're not visible, and so you can get through and hit the ladder and stuff like that. Um, but like Joker said, once it was found on a different trainer, we were like, oh, wait, this makes sense. Um, so. Uh, and when we talk about racers. like tiers of like the speed tiers, like Arcanine and Persian being fast ride Pokemon, they are just ever so slightly slower that I'm they're so not sad. fast <laughs> enough to do those skips. Yeah. Because, um, you know, we only skip these four trainers because, believe it or not, these are the only four outdoors trainers that we fight after we gain access to either Rapidash or Aerodactyl is the other Pokemon that we could do. Um, there are just no more outdoors trainers that you're on a ride Pokemon for in the entire run. Um, it is possible, we were memeing about it earlier, to get an early Persian or an early Arcanine. Um, and if it were possible on either of those two Pokemon, you could skip, like, all of Route 10, you could skip Rock Tunnel, like you could skip a bunch of trainers. Um, they would all require setups and whether or not it would be worth it, like with experience and everything is a whole other story, but um, Chancy, like, it would theoretically be possible, so. Just always get Route 10 Chansey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but because it's not possible with those ride Pokemon, then you, uh, you know, we just don't have to worry about it. Um, Echi oh, talking oh, to the Rapidash. Ooh, Interesting strategy. To, yeah, just try to, yeah, just try to get that item pick up. Um, yeah. Just, just uh, preempted it just a little bit. Yeah, that is the one full restore we're going to pick up. Uh, a lot of Pokemon speedruns will buy a full restore uh, or full restores at the Elite Four. Um, but we just pick up the one. Uh, it is necessary for one battle. Um, and that is the Agatha battle. Uh, By the way, two, uh, 246. Yeah, 246.15. Is unbelievably fast this should see him on victory yeah not like we're repelled or anything <laughs> yeah so uh current pace we're looking at about 15 seconds behind the pb um and according to his best possible time on that pb it looks like best possible time right now probably is just above the current world record. So probably a 259.45, like everything going perfect from here out. Um, so we're likely looking at a 300, but still that would be a phenomenal best race time. Um, 
and to have it in the first race of the tournament is like, unreal. <laughs> yeah, just wild. So here's how the Elite Four is going to work. The first two fights, not super dangerous. The only uh, variance here for Lorelei is whether you need to set up two X special attacks or three. Uh, it's just dependent on how high your special attack stat is. For Etchies, we know that his star is very good. I don't see any reason for him to not just go to plus four uh, and just use the two turns. Yeah, and Etchie did also being... not deposit. Um, so did, we, we do want to be heal. depositing typically. Um, but yeah, because he didn't have to heal, um, he is not going to deposit. Um, you will probably yeah. see racers throughout the tournament uh, opting to not deposit for the entirety of the Elite Four. Um, but we will likely see Etchy menu and deposit after this fight. Yeah. I don't or know the next fight. Or this the fight. Lapras, the Lapras can be a range if you have 137 special attack or less. The Jinx, you typically have to hit a Hydro Pump unless you're, if you're 139, the, uh, hit it. Did hit, yeah, he did hit that Hydro Pump. If you're 139 special attack, it's just a 13 and 16 Scald range, which is just a better percentage than the Hydro Pump accuracy. I think if you get to 142, I think it's even guaranteed. Um, so yeah, not surprised at all to to see Etchy take advantage of the high special attack stats and just go to plus four instead of plus six would save about seven seconds in that situation, especially if you don't miss that hydro pump anyways. Cause Ice crit. Yeah, the Jinx like the other one can put you to sleep. I I don't know if this is faster, but I know at one point some runners, if the Rapidash leveled up like the last fight, they would purposely just not deposit for this fight because they knew Rapidash would level up. Um, does Etchy have to heal for this? I'm not sure. So typically you don't even have to heal heading into Bruno because his lead is an Onyx. Uh, it does no Earthquake. It ten it doesn't even do more than 46 damage. And that's it. 46 max. And that's with min defense. Uh, a crit would do then up to like 70 damage what's, or so. What's he? Um, what's and he in this case, though? you probably wouldn't even have to risk it. You just have to set up one X special attack. So yeah, he is in crit range, but he is not in um, regular range. Now here's- He's in a different faint, uh, different he's range. In, he's in a different range. Uh, that you never- only Reasonable risk. Cheese. Absolutely reasonable risk. Yeah. You never see- oh. I'm sorry. No, I can't, so I, I only can't think not Randall Cheese <laughs> has seen faint. Aspect, uh, aspect. As An aspect has seen it. And that's it. Like every other runner of this game, just has never seen faint from the hit model. Uh, it is just the weirdest thing. It's a priority move. It is super effective. And at this insanely low HP, it could go for it, but it's it's been so rare for the longest time. So we're not even sure why the AI uh, acts the way it is. It's probably just bad switch entropy, to be honest. Now, it, it, it probably doesn't use it. So faint is a move that is plus two priority, but it breaks protect. And so it's probably like Sucker Punch in that the AI doesn't see it as a normal priority move. It sees it as like this special one that it will sometimes use and sometimes not. Here it didn't use it, which is perfect. Here it didn't use it. Typical. Never happens. Never seen it. Exactly. So now we're to our final three fights, and we're going to see just how risky the play is. And honestly, if we had a one controller Naomi, I don't see any reason uh, why Echi's not going to deposit Rapidash. Um, but we'll see. By the way, he did have to heal two full health. It does make a difference uh, for this upcoming Agatha fight. Okay. So in Agatha, you set up to plus two special attack and then plus two speed. But the lead Arba can be quite devastating. Uh, its main attacking move is Crunch, which does well over half damage, can drop your defense, uh, and it tends to use Glare turn one to paralyze. So in our two setup turns, we will typically use that full restore to heal us all the way back to full and then sweep our team. But some couple weird things can happen. One, you can get crunch turn one. Uh, you can see those defense drops. The gold bat also has quick attack. Uh, or on the plus side of things. Oh, oh let's go. Power of love. All right. Now, Rich, get Richard. Go for the kill one. here. Yep, you go for the kill here. Uh, and then finish your setup on the Weezing. It's a little less risky. The Weezing tends to use Thunderbolt. It can paralyze, but you do still have that full restore in the back. So typically getting pow uh, Power of Love turn one or turn two ends up being about the same. Okay. Yeah, yeah and perfect. we did not get a Paralysis, and that is Agatha disposed of. 
Now, the only difference we can see here is if he wants to risk hydro pumps to oh, gain for two the pump. seconds back. Uh, <laughs> and if he's going to do it, he's going to do it on the Gengars, which are a better range. Uh, but no. we are not going to see that. So, yeah, he's just going to tap it in with the Psychics to finish off Agatha. It is the it is the, the safest of the three dangerous fights. Uh, I... The next two will be their own flavor of uh, dodging crits. Yeah, so he's going to have a nice little laugh when he uh, does his uh, Agatha split here because I'm pretty sure he's going to be plus zero seconds. <laughs> like, it is literally synced up, and it has been this entire fight. Like, Record also got turn one Power of Love. Like, wow. everything is identical right now. Wow. Tell him to mash faster. Yeah. Here, I'll type it in <laughs> chat here. Mash faster. He, I mean, he might even be looking at his splits. Yeah, yeah, should, have, should have bumped. <laughs> Get those two seconds. Uh, so what we're going to see here Perfect. is we okay. had a very important ether menu. You have to oh, save it. Oh, he is going to save. Uh, very important ether because you want those uh, that psychic PP replenished. Lance is like on paper the most dangerous of these last two fights because you have to set up to plus six special attack and plus two speed. So because Archer. of that, you're going to pop an X special defend first, um, which is going to double your defense. And if you get crit, it basically does a triple amount of damage. Uh, the Seedra's most damaging move is Hyper Beam. Should never kill from full health, but in every other situation it would. Um, so that this long setup is going to give him a lot of opportunities to get critical hit, which is what makes this fight particularly dangerous. There's a Hooper Beam. So uh, nice thing about Hyper Beam is uh, obviously the recharge turn. So um, you will see uh, after he gets up to plus six, if the last turn was a, a Hyper Beam, uh, he'll probably elect to heal in battle. Um, but it wasn't here. So was not. just going to go ahead and finish this off. Um, the other thing on this fight, there are two potential ranges. Um, the Gyarados can be a range if you have really bad special attack uh, that really you can bad. fix by just using a Thunderbolt. Um, and losing the two seconds for the turnarounds. The other range is the Dragonite, which you really just cannot do anything about. Um, Etchy Star is good enough that there's no way in heck that this is a range. Mm -hmm. um, but that is yeah, something that you will probably see other runners run into over the course of the tournament. Yeah, 139 special attack is the... Uh, and you'll see a level up here. Range. And yeah, you get the level up here. By the way, nice uh, Alexa skip from Quill's screen. Be like 146. Yeah, 146. Plus six. Very high. That's almost at the point where you could plus two Thunderbolt the uh, uh, the Pidgeot, but not viable on the Pika side because you yeah. tend to need to go to plus six because uh, Jolteon is a range at plus four. But that's the next fight. But yeah, here's the Dragonite again. If you're lower special attack, um, tends to be a range. Not an issue for Echi. All right, pace. How's the pace? Wait, what happened? How did he? He's ahead of PB by five seconds. Okay. What happened on PB's Lance? I wasn't paying attention. Did, did he, they were tied uh, he at healed? Agatha, and he had to save here. Did uh, Did he heal in battle on PB? Maybe I wasn't. I wasn't looking. I just that, wasn't paying attention. That might have been. That hey, might have been like the turn. Zeon got a, a well five or six turn archer if the Cubone yeah. kills. Okay, Cubone kill him, nice. All right, so here we are on champ. It's about the same type of fight as Lance. Did he say? Uh, he did say. It. He... No. Oh, that's what happened on. Okay, so they're now exactly tied. Um, Echi and past Echi, um, because Echi didn't have to menu, so he must have gotten hyper beam the final turn and healed. Healed in yeah, battle. That's what I was expecting. So the champion fight is about exactly the same uh, as the previous fight. You set up to. It can be plus four or plus six for the Pikachu version, or yeah, for the Pikachu version, because the Jolteon is going to be the toughest thing to kill. Uh, can he, he would plus only two go this? Plus four for this. Uh, he could plus two, but there's no reason to, unless he's going to do plus four, four scratch with pumps. Jolteon. Um, so at 146, it's about, oh, I don't even, <laughs> it's below the range I would go for. Um, it's probably like a nine in 16 range to plus two Thunderbolts the Pidgeot. Uh, right. But Air Slash is not a high crit move. It just seems like it sometimes. 
Okay. All right. So we have to heal here. Heal. You have to heal here because of quick attack. Uh, it will always go for the kill if it is in quick attack range. It tends to do about 27 damage. Uh, except I went for air slash. It must have must have low rolled on no. a on a quick right, attack. So there's plus four. Except I saw a uh, right. heat wave once. Yeah, heat wave is very weird. Instead of um, instead okay. of quick attack. All right, one yeah, more thing that can go that wrong. There's one more thing that can go wrong. Um, so in Pika version, you pre you usually go to plus six. Uh, you can go to plus four and use a hydro pump. It looks like four. looks like he's doing plus four. Um, I mean that's how you beat the PB. If you're gonna do it, does he have to pump right here? I, I don't know the range off the top of my head. No, he's going. No, for I guess game. not. All and right, there it is. It. And GGs. there it is. That should be record by like two seconds. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so right from the get-go, we're gonna have a 259 on the first match of the tournament. Jesus. And what's nice is that if you use all psychics on Champ, you cannot misclick on the slow bro because you are out of psychics. You have to go to Thunderbolts. Yep. So champs, uh, records champion split is a two fifty eight forty three. Um. So this it, looks yeah, like it's going like to be two seconds. A forty. Yeah. Three, so three oh, seconds. Wow. Three now, seconds. okay. It is worth mentioning that um, there's obviously like stream delay. Tech had to start the timer at the right time. So. This is going to be an unofficial time we have here. Uh, we'll have the actual time and race time, um, as well as Etchy, I'm assuming, is recording um, if there is a discrepancy. So we should be good. Um, let me pull up the race time. Room. Yeah, I just did the same, too. Uh, it the, one you, you, the one you're in, Etiquette? Did yeah. you DNF that? I did DNF it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to hurt your ELO, though. I'm going to see if I can DQ myself after everyone's done. Because that might fix it. Wow, but yeah, everybody give it up for Etchy. Not, not only not only winning literally one race one, literally but tied world record. It's tied record. It's wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's thirty eight. Wow. I think. Yeah, his his official time he's gotten race time is a two fifty nine forty one. Yeah, and so wow. race time Which almost always rounds tied. up, so it should be a forty probably. But yes. Uh, we'll likely have to retime. That's. <laughs> oh <laughs> my goodness. Etchy, you're literally five rounds early for this time. Like, <laughs> like you yeah. didn't have to do this round one. <laughs> what the hell? You know, I personally thought Amber was going to be the runner to be. I might have to change my mind after this. That's a phenomenal oh, time. Wow. Right. So uh, we'll see if we if we'll see if Etchy wants to hop in the call um, to give a little bit of post commentary. He will, while but we watch. he'll just mute and deafen the whole time. Yeah. Just like um, so, it looks like Quo is here on Lorelei, all set up, ready to go. Um, look at that transition. That was clean, Jordan. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, it looks like uh, either looks like Quo, Quo set up the plus six. Plus six, um, yep. Which I think both his and Xeon's stars are going to warrant uh, plus six for Lorelei. They were not not the greatest in the world. Hope, see, you need to get the basketball. You can't leave yep. without it. Yep, Xeon is understanding that you literally cannot leave. The, the guy makes you <laughs> take the master ball there, unlike Rival, who lets you off on your merry way in tower. Yeah, and again, just like the uh, just like on Etchy's side, you probably will not see a heal between Quo, uh, between Lorelai and uh, Bruno. Is that special in the party? A, uh, I would assume so, because most runners have been practicing uh, with the safe strats. Um, so the safe strats for the Elite Four will keep Rapidash uh, in the back in that odd case where you know something might happen. You at least can revive and try again, but the strats actually will utilize that two controller functionality 
in some of these later fights to make particularly Lance uh, and Champ completely safe. Uh, and also, weird thing is that for Bruno, since Bruno sees that you have more than one Pokemon, he can use Stealth Rock instead of hitting you with Earthquake, uh, which just adds another layer of safety for this particular fight. Uh, now we definitely won't be seeing Faint from the Hitmonlee <laughs> at all. Etchy, congrats on the one-second world record. <laughs> I, I, that better be a one-second world record. I'm going to be mad. Uh, yeah, I'll, <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll, I'll upload it and actually frame time it, but... Well, what the heck congrats. was that? Did, so, <laughs> awesome. did, the first race. So did you have to go that hard round one in the tournaments? Dude, oh my god. Wait, I'm, okay, dude. I'm not going to do the normal thing of just complaining, but I was, I was making a lot of menuing mistakes. I just got carried super hard by, like... The catches were just ridiculous the whole run. Yeah, you're like, kind of right. you had motion controls, and I still got game. them in. It was ridiculous. Was was Giovanni a mistake or planned? Giovanni, yeah. like the two Giovanni controller, three. the 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 gym. Oh, I mean, I I commit to uh, two controlling that the moment I do the first shop and pewter. Okay, I okay. can't uh, I can't control that. Yeah, like it's not worth buying an extra thing at that point. It's not that much slower. So very nice. Man, I'm gonna wow. start. So, there, yeah. were, there were so many times where it was like, nope, it's over. And then something else happened and it pulled it back. Like you had the kind of Koga. rough archer fight and then Koga just went so, so well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I made every, every, every fight where a good, every split where a good fight happened, I made like a two second error on the menu. So that was really cool. Um, hey, and if, if this is, oh yeah, yeah. Have, I did, Fury, I the did Fury attack strats. <laughs> the Fury attack well, was really bad. That made me sad. I don't even know why. Yeah, I, did, I don't know why I my did notice cursor that went in up. The, I did notice that in kind of these late fights where you were trying to menu so fast, you know, yeah. hit that left button to get your X special attack, and you would it just you were a little too quick to the punch. Yeah. And it would end up activating, you know, the hyper potion. Yes, and you're like, no. Yeah, um, I was really so sweaty. That, was that like the <laughs> nerves? Where you're, was it like your heart rate really getting high? Were you really amped up near the end? It was mostly sweat. Um, my joystick was really sweaty, so like, I would like slide off it before I did like a full left input. <laughs> yeah, well, at honest. least it was that and not on Alexa skip because that's what happened to me. Oh yeah, the yeah. today because my thumb was like so sweaty that when I did the Alexa skip, it actually just on review it looked like I almost like bumped off a pixel and hit Alexa. Really? And I was like, well, that's that's the run over there. Um, but you yeah, did get to just, say hi to Rapidash. You liked that. I said I had Rapidash and Arcanine in the run. Yep. They were both okay, also so, the slowest possible animations for both of them. That was really cool. Agatha uh, looks pretty good for Quo. Did standards. Yeah, so I mean, I personally like uh, to stay as one controller. Uh, I know that Etiquette has been doing this two controller with uh, Dodrio strat as like a super safe strat. Um, but you only have like one opportunity to get crit. Um, on the uh, Arbok, unless you get like a defense drop. Or As I say, there's a lot of ways this fight can go bad. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's it, it's context matters, right? Like we we were talking uh, while you were on amazing pace, Etchy, about like when would you like? There's there's got to be the limit of like I'm gonna finish this run safe to get a solid yeah. time versus I'm going to go all out because this is PB or sub three or what? record pace versus I need to go all out because somebody's right on my tail. So like there's that right. weird sandwich and we're trying to figure out like what is that right time? My thought was like if you were like a minute and a half or two minutes behind where you were, you probably would have done a lot of safer stuff in the end game. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, just to yeah, try to like, finish out the race versus I, I like, was thinking about a lot basically yeah. throughout mid game where I was like, when do I make decisions for like where to do risk and stuff? Mm -hmm. And in like, a, a, if I was racing against like Amber and you, then it would be yeah. quite a bit different. And I would have to be very careful about like the risk I take and whatnot. But if I'm just trying to like finish with a really good race time versus get potentially getting world record and taking a risk for that, I really didn't have to make a decision until like Agatha. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. really up until Agatha. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I, that's, I basically just did all the, the normal risky stuff up to that point. Because yeah, I was like, you well, even had the you even had the benefit of not having to heal before Lorelei, so it was like, oh, I can just optimally keep Rapidash in the party, and then you really didn't have to make that decision until yeah, exactly, later. yep. 
Yeah, oh, yeah. Really? Are you... That was really risky, and I probably shouldn't have done it, considering how low my <laughs> HP ended up being. I, I think Etiquette uh, and I are going to ask the same question. I was going to say, how were you of getting faint on Bruno? I was going to say, how happy are you that your name's not Randall? <laughs> or Aspen. I, I, knew, I knew I wasn't going to get fainted because my name's not Randall, so I, I wasn't worried. Okay. I, still I don't think I've ever seen it, so. <laughs> yeah, it never happens. Like I was saying yeah. when, when uh, before you fight, it never happens. I, I really thought I'd have much higher HP after Earthquake because of, uh, even though I wasn't like over 100 HP, I was still like really, really good defense, which is why I went for like 1C Naomi and stuff. So I was like, surely it's it's going to be fine. And then 4 HP. I was like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So 2C two, two Lance, it looks like. Yeah, this is, this is the safe strat where you actually go yeah. into Lance, one controller, uh, set up one time, usually like an X speed, and then send out the second controller to start double setting up on the rest of the uh, rest of the Pokemon here. It just times out like weirdly good enough to do one turn of one controller and then summon the second controller. Plus, you get the benefit is of if the uh, Seedra goes for Hyper Beam turn one, you do get to do uh, a second setup turn usually next special attack and then kill because of the uh the charge turn and you don't even summon the second controller until aerodactyls on the field um yeah it just works out to save just a little bit of time it's not like a big deal if you go into the fight um with the second controller active i, I saw 142 special on the starmie that'd be okay. that yeah, and if you notice, the Starmie's level 54. This is a 3 plus 2 candy route from Quo. So he's got an extra level. Uh, that probably meant we saw extra turnarounds on Bruno. Uh, it just works out that way that that friendship threshold has hit a fight earlier. All right, Echi. While Quo is finishing up here, we have interesting questions about the tournament. So obviously, it is very clear that the best race time is going to be sub-3. Because uh, it already <laughs> is, with one racer finished. But sure. um, so there are eighteen people making it into the upper bracket of round two. Uh, it's going to be the thirteen race winners and the five best other race times. Um, what do you think the pot one cutoff is going to be? So the top six times for round top one. Six times. And what do you think um, the upper bracket cutoff is going to be, which is top eighteen times? Oh, okay. Uh... Top eight, like upper bracket, honestly, probably like three fifteen or something or three eighteen, honestly, okay. even I think would be like around what we're reasonable. saying. And then um, top six, probably like three oh four. Yeah, I would say three hundred five. Three hundred five. Three hundred five. Yeah, I was I was in the three hundred five camp. These I guys said three hundred six camp. And then I, said I know there's a lot. A bunch of the races are like very consistently getting three hundred four. So mm -hmm. I uh, I think that's already like four of the top six slots already taken. By people who are like capable of that, so watch everyone. Who, who, who do you think your biggest competition is? Uh, definitely not etiquette or T-Pat. Uh, so no. you don't have to see me. It's fine. Damn, doesn't no, even say, mention uh... me. That's how bad I am. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're the one who literally keeps putting yourself down. You're like, yeah, you don't even pick me. yourself in your first blah, blah, blah. race. <laughs> no, you're, no, you're no I know. Person I, who I, got like a freaking three hundred seven in like four runs. So I didn't get a three hundred seven. Never got it. Anyways, um, <laughs> what are we gonna say? Hey, I have to put myself down and then act incredulous when you, when you, <laughs> <laughs> quote unquote. Uh, and like, and so, honestly, uh, if you said Randall, we would believe you because we we're joking. He's the super boss uh, because he had to drop <laughs> from the tournament. And we we're just gonna make the winner of the tournament face Randall in like a like a real super boss, like for all oh, the guys. But anyways, I'll let you answer the questions. Yeah, answer. so I'd say. Uh, Wave Warrior, if he actually does more races and like prepares race strat stuff. Obviously, mm -hmm. Fire Leaf Green Tournament winner, very intimidating. Emerald Barrier Blitz winner. He's been here before. He's been he's been under the spotlight before. He knows what it's like. Um, Kaden. And then yeah, I'd say Etiquette and Amber are probably the next two. They're just the I've ones getting the best race time consistently. Ton, uh, consistently. Yeah, Wave has been doing a ton of the uh, the Fire Red Round Two runs, which yeah. is kind of a similar like run. They catch sixty Pokemon instead of fifty. Uh, it's interesting, but yeah, I've I've seen him do more of that than Let's Go, uh, unless it was like at GDQ or kind of like forcing him to do it. Um, 
Yeah, but everyone got turn one protect from the muck. Good. <laughs> the the, the less Caden trolls fights? we can get, the better. Um, yeah. And yeah, one? looking looking at chat, uh, it does look like Quo is going to PB here. Dude, let's um, go. Just two PBs in the first race. That's awesome. And, uh, yeah, and I, honestly, I, looking I, like a solid time to make round two upper bracket. For sure. Yeah. Very, yeah, very I, solid. I think this is pretty comfortable going to be. Uh, it was really interesting two. in the early game because your catch count was so high. You had like, what was your what yeah. was your moon exit? It was like 35, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, like, it was uh, uh, some 18 moon exit. 18, 18, 18 yeah. moon exit. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, so... But Quo's moon exit was his catch count was a lot lower. So you guys yeah. were perfectly synced up on bridge. And it's like, okay, the catch count is a little different. But it was like, Quo's not doing bad. Like, yeah. this run was yeah. really respectable the whole way through. Quo yeah, also really got good a chance to like safe stuff and everything. Yeah, every, everybody got a chancy this run, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's funny. Zeon saw Clefable, but did opted to not uh, try, which is fair. That's fair. Table sucks. After getting a chance, you, it's, it's fine. <laughs> no, he got chancey route 10. Oh, later. Oh, OK. Yeah, that that is wild. OK. <laughs> I respect it. Yeah, you got rare char, rare Bulbasaur. <laughs> I think who saw the Kanga? Was it Quo? Yes, it was on Quo's screen. Yeah. yeah, I didn't see. Why'd one. you catch Charmander being that far ahead, by the way, on catches? My catches weren't that. High. OK, so. My catches really weren't that good uh, up until basically the Charmander happened. Uh, I did not because my route ten was was really bad. <laughs> I was really I, I honestly yeah, route ten was, was pretty like bad in, actually. Now in extreme danger at route ten because I just missed out on Uterine female, Radicate, Spiro, Firo. Um, so I was like, oh man, yeah. I really don't want to leave I without like I at least Spiro. It looked like you caught like one and a half things because yeah, was, yeah, was no, like, that's literally I just uh. ran out. But the only reason I ran out of there instead of like waiting for more was like, I'm sure like worst case scenario, I'll have time to pick up like the Moonstone for Clefairy at the Copy mm -hmm. House if I really need to. It's okay, like because the top end if if everything just works out, then I'll be in a really good spot because this time's really good. Yeah, and, and it just happened to work out. <laughs> it's it's also tough to really be like attached like oh this is two fifty eight pace going into tunnel. It's like nothing is a pace going into tunnel. Oh, yeah, no, I, I didn't like I didn't even think of it being 258 pace until somebody said it in chat, like yeah. when I was at Blaine. Congrats. Yeah, why were oh. you typing in chat instead of mashing faster? It's a Joy-Con game, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. you can mash with one yeah. hand. Okay. Uh, welcome in Quo. Congrats on the PB. GG. Hey, thank you. Great time. Your run, your run was really solid all around, and I know that you were up against, you know, this guy, Mister Sub Three. But we yeah. were saying the whole run that it was just like this was just solid. You were just chugging along and doing everything right. Was there anything that really stood out in this run that really helped you put over, put you over the top for a PB? Um, I got pretty lucky early on with catches, um, and then just like generally, uh, like I got an EV first try and it was big so it just gave me a ton of xp for like all those um <laughs> all those evolutions and all that um we I also, you was, also like, got playing... a moon chancy oh yeah that too that also definitely helps to uh do a couple of things uh i miss uh, clefairy because it never spawned but you know it is what it is i'll take chancy any day you, you take one <laughs> pink thing over another how, so exactly. how often are you feeling that you'll make upper bracket with this time uh oh. I'd have to look at the who else is in uh, the it's pot two there. Top, but, top uh, eighteen. Yeah, yeah I so think I think I have a fighting chance. I'm not uh, holding my breath on it, but I like my odds right now where I'm sitting. And now it's on yes. everyone else. Like I don't have any pressure going into the next two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that is quite nice getting it out of the way early. Um, to give some perspective, so it's the the thirteen race winners, and it'll be five other times. Um, currently, there are only 18 total players that have a better PB than this time. Um, so, right. so if even one of them, you know, slips below it, uh, and everyone else like performs at their PB, then this would make it. Um, so I, I do think this is probably going to be around the cutoff. I personally think this makes it through. Um, I, I, I think so too. Yeah. 313 yeah. is pretty solid. Yeah. Hopefully. Uh, do you, so do you think it's better to do 
the races first like this or like last so like you know what time you need to get the the cut off Ooh, the that's tough um i think it sort of depends on your time like i probably could have used an extra two weeks of practice but you know i still think i did okay um how much have you been putting in the last couple weeks or months? Uh, so when the tournament was announced, I decided to learn the game. Um, and then Dude. Zelda dropped, so I spent ah. two weeks playing that. Ah. And then... Good choice, good decision. <laughs> Hon honestly, <laughs> honestly, don't even hate it. Yeah, so we're probably like four weeks in since I learned the game, which is, you know, oh, pretty damn. decent. And already, yeah, wow. no, already this time. That's really good. Is there, is there any, like, strats or anything from the notes or any experience that just, like, clicked, you know, from learning the game to where you are now? Was it something with, like, how to get excellent throws or when to bury? Or is there was there an X factor that you kind of learned and now you can hang your hat on and say, like, yeah, I do this well and that's why I can get a 313? Uh, nothing, like, super outstandish. I guess this game is, like... It's not a difficult game, so to get better, you just need to, like... You don't need to play better, you need to play smarter, which I think mm. is really interesting. Yeah, um, very decision-making, heavy type of game. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Execution, yeah. yeah. Um, so I've been, like, watching a bunch of different runners do things and, like, trying to realize, like, why they're doing certain decisions at certain points. Um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it, just... And honestly, that's a great way to approach it, approach it because this game rewards like the repetitions so much because you find yourself in a different scenario every single time. And by watching other runners, you can pick up experience from watching them and being like, okay, how did they approach this? And if you're like thinking of what they should do and then they do it, it's just like, oh yeah, I got that right. It's like, this is when they can menu. Yeah, Double exactly. Yeah, it's it's also funny with this game because this is one of like the best games to compare against other people because like everyone sort of approaches a lot of things differently and so you can learn a lot from other runners and stuff. But doing actual time comparisons between people sucks because of catch counts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So 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 when are you gonna get into uh, the other categories like? Uh... <laughs> like, uh, All right, man. <laughs> you, you don't have to answer that question. You should not answer that question. I'm just joking. I mean, if you sell me on it, you know. You play uh, with a friend. I'll, I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this about the catch them all categories. This is the best and easiest game to do catch them all out of all of Pokemon. Um, just like catching Pokemon is just so easy in this game. You just enter it in battle and throw balls at it and it's like as simple as that you don't have to like worry about oh am i gonna die if you know it doesn't get in this 70 percent you know such and such um because i see that problem even in like the fire red round two runs where you could just be like on a ponyta and if it doesn't want to get in the ball it doesn't want to get in the ball um but for this game there, there are ways to make the catch routes more consistent uh, particularly with like you know the double, the double ball throws, the raspberries. Like there are plenty of catches that are like, oh yeah, this is guaranteed as long as I get an excellent throw, things like that. Um, so it's not as it's not as like volatile as anything else. Um, yeah, and for catch them all, like it's just one, it's just one fifty if you do it with a friend, one thirty five if you do it by yourself. It's not like you're catching like six hundred Pokemon and. <laughs> Sword and Shield or 380 something in Scarlet Violets. Oh, it's, it's actually, not going to be that taxing. Yeah, Gen uh, 1's a bit easier for that, I guess. Yeah. Yo, knock skip. Nice. Like oh, thanks. Yeah, no, I always do it. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't mean, hey, failed it. I did I it today did. in my run. Let's go. Let's go. No, but the real pretty, category right? is, is Ditch Fill. That's the best. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't say anything about the other category. That's. Yeah, I just want to. What, kick the, by Koga? Uh, no. I'm, I'm assuming it's the one where you catch, like, 29 Tauros. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay, so we're at Giovanni's gym. Yeah. This is so, the safe 2C. Which, I think, Quo did the safe 2C. So we already saw it once. Uh, on Giovanni or on a trainer? Yeah. On the trainer. Uh, yes, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm still using, like, the beginner notes. Oh, absolutely. Um, especially, like, 
in these settings where you're just trying to finish runs, um, you know, at some point the competition will be will be tough enough that you know it's it'll be really hard to do some of these uh, safer strats and still maintain a lead. But um, oh, Zeon actually talking to the other trainer. Um, oh, yeah, you can you kind of see should be fine. And, yeah. But, and just I actually mentioned anything. this. We we fight the other trainer because the sand slash does no protect, um, and it's really the only reason why we do this really funky movement trying to get in the black belt's face. Um, yeah, it'll be a really interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's a good case study to be like, hey, this is why we actually fight the other trainer instead. It's not like a big deal, um, One even at the beginner level. Oh, this is this is making me excited. I can't wait for my race tomorrow, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I think we've might got one of the triple races tomorrow. It might be double. Oh, it might only be double, right, right, right. I think one of them's getting rescheduled, yeah. Yeah, looking to it the next been. race. The next race is... Uh, is he's in the next race? I'm not... It, it is, is my team pads race. Uh, Razor's Edge and Sheep, uh, which is a very uh, interesting trio because... Uh, both of my competitors are my mods. Uh, so, <laughs> so it's me versus my mods. So it'll be, I'm sure Sheep is going to be uh, trying to trying to throw me off the off the sense because <laughs> if is, I know uh, him. <laughs> what is, how uh, long is, what's Sheep's TV? Uh, um, somewhere Sheep in the 330s, was, I, I yeah, believe. Yeah, Sheep was doing some runs and I think he got like a 335 or a 333 recently. Um, so definitely has a, uh, has has picked up the game and has done a really good job to get to that kind of like upper beginner level uh pretty quickly oh i love uh, it yes here we go yeah, yeah, yeah. Got the, got yes. <laughs> oh did you guys see it uh zeon got a shiny eradicate i, I heard i oh saw it in the God. chat and actually this is my first time <laughs> actually seeing it <laughs> kept it in the party the whole time it's great <laughs> let's go yeah, so that'll be, that'll be pretty fun. Razor is also, like, excellent. And he's been doing the game for a long while, too. Um, so it's... I I feel that, like, for Razor, like, it's only a matter of time before, like, you know, he cracks that duck and also gets, like, a 308 or a 307 or something mm -hmm. that's really good. Because I think he's been stuck on that, like, 311 or 312 PB for a while. And he just needs, like, a couple things to go right. And boom, he's going to have minutes of time save easily. So... So that is not like as easy of a matchup as what it could look on paper. So I'm not surprised that uh, our other friend Sandy uh, did not pick me to win that race, but oh, more so because I was trashing the right Joy-Con uh, than anything else. <laughs> um, yeah, and then the other race we have tomorrow is um, later on in the afternoon. It's going to be like 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, that's Ergote against CyJ against Fortunate. So Ergote actually... Uh, recently got like a 304 PB, uh, was already in pot one with a 307, but improved that to a 304, which is awesome to see. Um, CyJ, who uh, has been coming back to the game, did a couple of races, and then Fortunate, who actually, I believe, learned the game at SGDQ last week. Um, so relatively new to the game, uh, but still putting in a lot of work. Uh, talking to him, it seems like he's quite addicted to the game, so hopefully those... Um, it was, a, be some nice it was a matter there. of time before we got him off of Alpha Sapphire. <laughs> yeah, I, I literally ran into him at the airport and he was playing the game. Like at one of the, like, the, the bar stations. So <laughs> <laughs> that'll be good to see. Yeah, it does look like Xeon is also on PB pace. That's awesome. Triple Free race, PB. Let's do it. That'd be great. Hey, yo. Did Free not home. have that on my bingo card. <laughs> <laughs> So Tifa, how does it feel going from from physical to digital? Because oh, I I I feel like Rock Lee taking off the leg weights. <laughs> <laughs> just it's 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 incredible. And honestly, it was just well at first I was you, struggling. When, so did you, I, when did you switch? So I switched basically right when the tournament was announced, um, because I had told Etiquette and others. Like, even, like, a year ago, it was like, oh, yeah, if we do a tournament, I'll just play on digital. Um, and I, I was committed to that. Uh, so, yeah, I made that switch to digital um, just, yeah, when that tournament was announced. 
and like noticed an immediate difference, but I was still kind of relearning the game at that top level. Because uh, those of you that know, my best physical time is a 304, like 30405. Um, which, if you account for that physical digital difference, which we assume was about... Uh-oh, we just got sand attack, by the way. Uh, <laughs> if we account for that difference, it's like a three-minute change. But I was still only getting, like, 304, 305 runs on digital. So I still had some work to do to try to get to those higher levels. I uh, had a 301 pace run today die to Alexa skip failing. Um, I was actually a little sad about that. But looking back, looking back I took... I took it was like eight or nine wild encounters and I was pretty salty through the through most of the run. And I looked back, I like most of them I couldn't even dodge. Like they just spawned on top of me. Like literally like six or seven of them. Um so there's definitely more time in it. Uh I this going back to what I saw on Xeon screen, uh looks like he was outsped by the Pidgeot and got the Starmies into the, the Star is so bad. <laughs> so that's the that's the minimum speed that we mentioned earlier. Like this can happen. It's one of those weird things where it's like, oh yeah, you can get outsped by Pidgeot on this fight if you get sand attacked. This this is the worst army so far. Um, there's like yeah. a, there's oh. only been three, but oh, he was one twenty three speed. 125 special attack. It can Ooh, be that awesome. low. That's what uh, I saw. I didn't, I he was only he was only level 49 though instead of 50. You're usually 50 there okay. for this fight. That makes more sense. So then. if he went in at the correct level, he would have been still speed tied. You know what? I stand corrected. It looks like. At 49, you can be as low as 122. You can be 126 at 50. Okay. So what what I've noticed is it's kind of funny because like you, you know how like the partner Pikachu and Eevee have the characteristic and it's random, but characteristic mm -hmm. has always existed in like the Pokemon stat screen for I don't know how long. It's been a while. Uh, it's just like this weird flavor text, and it's typically. It's just relevant to what your highest IV stat is. So if your highest IV stat is um, is special attack, and that IV ends in a 1 or a 6, so if it's 16 or 26 or 31, it would say it's mischievous as just like the characteristic and as a clue that says, hey, your highest uh, IV on this mon is special attack. But it's obviously random for a Pokemon that has all 31 IVs. Um, so for Starmie, it can be any of those characteristics, but it still influences that AV distribution. So whatever your highest IV like value across Starmie, it'll get that as the characteristic. And it could be attack, it could be special attack, it could be HP, it could be anything. So it will still favor getting whatever its highest stat line is, getting AVs in that. But you also still have the benefit of it being modest, so you still get the special attack favoring anyways. So that's what it really is like kind of rich get richer situation where if your special attack is really high, if that's your best IV, then you still have that 50% chance of getting a single AV in special attack on every level up. Didn't know that. <laughs> Uh, but it hurt. It hurts like the other stats, like speed. So since we know that Xeon's speed is really bad, uh, it definitely does not have the characteristic to uh, get more speed <laughs> AVs. So it it'll have that <laughs> it'll have that one in a uh, one in eight chance to get it. A nice uh, <laughs> nice rapid ash skip try there. Almost worth. Honestly, it. I respect it. <laughs> I'll allow it. Oh, this is uh, one controller. We'll uh, yeah, we'll see if he summons a second controller, which I think he just yes. does. Okay, yeah. yeah, cool. Okay. I hope this army's not good enough. <laughs> shiny, let's go! Oh, yeah, this gives oh, the right taking used here. Yeah. Let's go. Yo, this, this Eradicate is really the MVP. 
Okay, so Hydro Pump well, hits. Hydro Pump again. Interesting. Oh. Sucker Punch. Oh, Sucker Thanks, Punch. Okay. Oh. Yeah. What a <laughs> skill. You love to see it. How skilled. <laughs> oh, the Hydro Pump. Oh, missed. missed. Oh. It missed. That's the, is that the first one of the tournament? No, I actually missed one. I missed one. It cost like 20 one. seconds. Yeah. That was oh, a yeah. punishing oh, one. Because it was on the Jinx, wasn't it? Yeah, the Jinx. Yeah. Lovely kiss. It was tragic. I love that Etchy was still kiss into many to club complain into crime. about a 259 <laughs> run. Save some speed for the rest of us. <laughs> Etchy, what are your thoughts on Route 6 skip? Because I did it again today. It's bad. I'm told you already. <laughs> <laughs> I had done it two in a row, Just and I was on get PvP's unlucky. two in a row. Oh, oh, oh no. Whoops. Oh, no. Whoops. Yeah, well, he got it pretty fast there. Oh, good. Route route six skip is good if you're doing a Lolan Doug trio. Because <laughs> <laughs> then you Lolan get the Doug you get the experience for which, the, the Diglett, and then you can catch will... the Vulpix late. <laughs> to which we'll see when? Round... During the uh... AOP tournament. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's yeah, unironically yeah. good in Eevee for AOP. Yeah, I tried so it. I didn't like it as what? much. I tried it. I was joking you were going to do cadaver strats when you caught that Abra. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> you don't want, like, sub 255? I don't even know. Oh, yeah, dude. Okay, there's another. Okay, there's, like, two really bad things that happened in Rock Tunnel. Oh, it happened in Rock Tunnel and. Uh, the tower rival. Tower rival is the fury attack thing, but I made a huge mistake with uh, what's what's her name? Uh, Naomi. Oh, uh, oh, what's no, her name? Not Naomi. The picker nicker. No. Ace, Ace trainer. No. No. What's it? What is it? Sophia. Ace trainer. Sophia. Cabra girl. Sophia. 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 Yeah, I, I wasn't supposed to do control of that. I had enough attack to just zippy zap twice. <laughs> Oh, I didn't wow. even notice you two. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, I just had no awareness there how, how, how my attack really was because I just didn't see a level up for so long. Um, so I didn't realize that I was like, or I didn't, I didn't see a level up in battle for so long. Yeah, so I didn't realize how high my attack had actually gotten and then I ended at like 80 attack. Seeing level ups in battle is like good and bad because it takes longer to, when you level up in battle, but like Whoa. you can see your stats. Yeah. Um, which can help. Dear Echi, what was the nature of your Pikachu? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it, it was check. plus. A, I think it was plus. Yeah, it was attack. plus attack. Uh, I want to say it was probably naughty. No, no, no. Uh, because whatever. What is the bottom left stat? Is it defense? Bottom left is defense. Bottom left. Yeah. Defense. And yeah, that, it was uh. Um, I I paused the game so the credits are still going. When it's over, I'll check. But I'm pretty sure that means it's uh. I'm pretty sure it's lonely. Lonely. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure what the minus was the entire game. I just knew I was supposed to attack. So. <laughs> I wasn't sure because like the, the first level up you got, you had the 17 attack. But I was like, yeah, I don't know if you got the AV or not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I wasn't paying attention. Because uh, like it was oh. the, the feed was a little crispy. So it was like I saw the 17, but I couldn't see if there was a plus one next to it. Grab oh, the no. Oh, no. Oh, Xeon was right there and accidentally pushed the boulder into a corner on the last yeah. hit. Oh, I have, bottom left I have is special defense. Mistake. It was naughty. Oh, you said bottom left. I don't know my left or my right. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's like backwards in like a different yeah. game or something where like the attack and special, or yeah, like oh, the attack and special. Pokemon can't like, like be the same thing. And also, I still get confused that um that blue is minus and red yep. is plus. Red yeah, is rad, blue, blue red is bad. Red is rad, blue is bad. Yeah. Which is why you should always use red splits, because it's rad. <laughs> said no one ever. I actually, I was like, when I started speedrunning, that was like the first thing I did with my live split. I got rid of the red coloring on the behind splits. I made them yellow instead, because I just hated looking at the red so much. I was like, I hate this. Made it yellow, and I'm like, skip. This is really better. Oh, not um, getting off Didn't the even okay. go for it. 
Uh, there is a way to do this if you mess it up. Um, unfortunately, it does involve some ranges if you have bad special attacks. So. Sure does, and I found that out today. This Dragonair is a range. Yep. Yep. Luckily, the Dragonair is not the dangerous one. Uh, the Wigglytuff that comes out second has, I think, Shadow Ball, which hurts a lot. Yeah, which is uh, I, I didn't even I didn't even finish it. Okay. I was just like, well, Dragonair done. Do you do you heal back at Jenny, or do you just hyper? Uh, you can either center heal or pump Agatha three times. Oh yeah, you gotta. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I, that's the legitimate. I was, I was like, oh, I hit Alexa, but if it's not too bad, I can just pump back at the three times. Mm. Yeah, my right, my, my bond fully great. processed on YouTube, so I'll confirm right now what the time is. Awesome. That reminds me, I should. Actually... Hey, it's a hit mod in VR. Look. What? 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 Is it up? Oh, we saw. It's we on saw the, a squirrel on, on correct, Route Twenty Five. It's on the correct floor, by the way. I yeah, might add. Is. Yeah, this yeah, actually really reminds dumb. me. I have to, I have to cut my, uh, I have to cut my like three oh two run from a couple days ago. There's a really dumb strat where you can in, in uh, the catch them all category where you wait for a 05 percent hit on spawn. It's great. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great so strategy. I love it. When? No. Will will Etchy be the number one seed? You know what? If Etchy did the AOP tournament, he would just get a sub five round one. Let's face he, it. He he would not do it because he avoids AOP all the time. <laughs> nice try. Nice. It's not trying to bait me into it. It's not happening. All right. It is confirmed. Two fifty nine forty. Two fifty nine forty. There it is. There it is. So is that one, one second? One, one second, second. World record. Absurd. Wow. Avoided the level oh, kiss. So here is another uh, tournament meta question for you, Echi. Mm -hmm. Either you or someone else, do you think that will be best race time? Mm. How long is the tournament going to last? How many months? Uh, uh, it should end around the first week of August. He's trying to figure out if he can yep. beat that time mid race. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can see. His I, I, I would probably right lean towards this being best tournament time because, like, again, what, once like t the races get a lot tighter, you can't really justify going for all the risks that like I went for, right? Um, yeah, and the other thing is like, you know, what if you're instead of having a naughty Pika, you just got calm today? Sure, you know. Yeah, yeah. There, there a lot of things had to line up for this, and a lot of things had to line up for me and it even take like the risk that I took so uh I would, what, I I would say, probably lean towards probably... this being the best time I, what if I, both I, races I counter... on 259 pace <laughs> well I'll I'll counter that with this thought um in the late like think like the finals or the semi-finals like the competition mm -hmm. should be so tight that like going for safety strats might be too slow like if you're within 30 seconds of somebody yeah. in in the elite four can you afford even going for the safety strats and i would say no so that might push you and push our other competitors to go for like true pb like pb strat runs uh in the tournament because they have to otherwise you know you could be just sacrificing a win if somebody's in sniping distance yeah i guess if like two people are like on really really good pace then yeah that could happen For sure. So, so does Zeon actually have fifty-two caught? Fifty-two <laughs> caught? Yeah. yeah I saw on tracker. Yeah, I don't 52. know. I'll, I do I'll investigate. Like... I'm on it. I'm on it. All right. I'll investigate. <laughs> I, 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 I do like one apparently. I, I don't know if I don't know if the other racers saw. I do like the Flareon on Let's Go Eevee. I, I did see that in chat. Yep. Yeah. Koga did say 51, according to Sandy. Okay. And Xeon in chat says 52, yes. All right. Og. Overachiever. Actually won the race. <laughs> I Caught the most <laughs> credit. What am I the most shiny. First, one of my first 80% runs, I, I didn't mark the gift Pokemon. 
So I caught 50 Pokemon without getting Lapras and Porygon. <laughs> so I forgot about them. <laughs> Alright, so final trainer here in Victory Road for Zeon. Move into the Elite Four. Yeah, with uh, with safe shots, this should pretty easily be sub four in PB. What is Zeon's PB? Four thirteen, I think. Yeah. Okay, nice. How long has Zeon been running this though? Still not that long. Yeah, probably not. Probably just picked up the game like within the last couple weeks because a lot of people um, went for it. Uh, it looks like he did skip the full restore. I wonder if he's going to buy them in... Or do this... It... Is there the two controller strat that doesn't... The, the two controller restore? Agatha would skip the full restore, but I don't know that it's written down anywhere. Uh, so Zeon... Is the issue only has one PB on speedrun.com, but it's from April 2019. Oh, so returning to the game. There you go. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Uh, Xeon said this in the server at one point. I remember seeing this. Okay. I missed a lot of stuff, so. <laughs> I have so I mean, many channels I, in the server I mean... right now because of all the races. Yeah. <laughs> I, I read every single message everywhere, even though I don't have permissions. Dedication. <laughs> Should right, be so buying some full resources. I have to be a, a part of. Yeah, that's fine. I was, I was just looking back at some of my Discord messages, and it's like, oh yeah, I have this tournament, and then I have Cardboard Clash next month. Like, whoo! A lot of competitiveness going on here. <laughs> I have this, and then I have Genshin speedrunning. <laughs> <laughs> and Star Rail. I, Are you ready I for Kafka, that... Echi? Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not talking about this... that weeb stuff during this, during this <laughs> turning. I, I heard no, that. I did, that has I did hear the sleeves look really good. Is this true? Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, going back to, to the rate. This Lorelei has to go to plus six because the Starvey is back. It sure is. Uh, but luckily, plus six is no problem at all. Yeah, one thing with the ether is if you accidentally ether the wrong move, which I've definitely never done before, <laughs> um, then you have to get creative with you. It's fine. Yeah, it, and it's, thankfully it's just champion because Lance, you can just like super effective like everything practically yeah. except for the. And even the Dragonite, you just, you just hit Thunderbolt and it's a two shot. Sh should I commit um, to doing pump on Agatha now? I think. Whenever I make. I think the only thing that's a problem with uh, champion is the Vile Plume. Uh, and then, like, everything else could be, like, just fine. Especially if you go to, like, plus six. Like, you could definitely, uh, like, scald the Raichu. I forgot what I did. I died, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I think if I hit a Hydro Pump, I would have been fine. Is the Radicate still in the party? We I were okay. So for a it moment, is. we were we were actually surprised that Echi did not pump Agatha. Oh, Fee not surprised so at all. I was not surprised at all. I was not surprised at all. <laughs> Are you yeah, sure you didn't yeah. want to hit just like one on the wheezing just to give you the two seconds? Well, I knew. Uh, I knew the gold that Etiquette gave was not like. For, for champ was not like the best possible gold. Mm -hmm. That's just because uh, that that my splits for that PB at that time were like messed up and I had to re-gold them during the run. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I, I just knew champ was wrong. I thought that was a normal gold. Uh, but the splits I was running with here did have a normal champ, not a good champ gold, but like a normal champ gold. Uh, so I knew there was still a chance without pumping Agatha.
Bruno. You won't see faint. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Uh, I mean, maybe that's why Randall gets faint so often because you get one faint per every time you pump Agatha. How many? <laughs> and how your many switch just Randall... remembers. How many faints has Randall gotten? Because I know Asper's gotten two. Three. Yeah, oh, Randall's gotten three. Oh, Okay. Unless he also, got pumps, more since he also pumps Agatha all the time. Oh, I, I also feel like I've only been in position to like die to faint, like a handful of times too, which is probably why I've never seen it. Uh, yeah. Maybe I just overheal, or I heal more than I than Randall does. <laughs> yeah, I've been like down to like 10, 12. Still have never seen it. Have you ever yeah. seen Heatwave from the Pidgeot? Once. I've seen so it I saw doing the two controller piece. strat. That's it. Can, yeah, can it was the two controller strat. Yeah. I saw one controller once. Uh, I don't. Or twice. So. Same person the whole time. Oh wow. Heat wave, ten percent chance of burning. Yeah. So it could. That would be so. That'd be such a yeah. crappy way to lose so much time. Yeah, Denver, yeah, we were just confused. I've seen I've cool. seen Heat Wave once in like a single controller setting. Uh, I've also seen Poison Jab on the Arbok twice now. Yeah, I've seen that a couple times. We're I've still never seen the Sludge Bomb, or the yeah the Sludge Bomb from uh, Vile Plume yet. Although in Eevee, you just have way less chances to see it. Yeah, you would tip. I mean, you'd have to be in this weird situation to plus two Thunderbolt with like a reasonable chance to kill. Yeah. Um, to try to mitigate, you'd have to do it before you heal because that would be the reason why you do it, right? To to save the heal turn um, on champion. 2C Agatha, I see. 2C right. Agatha. What was the 2C Pokemon? Was it the Raticate? Yeah. Okay, this could be a little dangerous. Good or bad? Yeah. No. So, um, so something that's interesting about the AI in this game. So, uh, the party order that gets sent out is based on the Pokemon you have on the field. If you have two Pokemon Trevor on the Dash. field, um, then it's sort of a 50, 50, which one the game chooses. Um, and the way that it works is it will choose the Pokemon that has the highest effective move power against you. Um, and then if there is a tie, it will pick whichever one is quote unquote first on the team. And so on Agatha's team, the Weezing came out second. Perfect. Uh, so that was a 50-50 chance. <laughs> um, both Weezing comes out against Starmie because Thunderbolt is super effective, so it has a 180 base power move against you. Um, Wait, that was the next speed. Uh, and he, yeah, he X special attacked again. He did not X speed. Oh, so that's yeah. So the Gengar coming out uh, third here would have been nice um, if the X speed went off turn two. But the uh, Gengar has Sludge Bomb, which is 90 base power. So you, in order to guarantee the Weezing comes out second, you need something that is um, weak to electric moves, but not weak to poison moves. So uh, Water-type Pokemon or um, something like that. Oh, oh, no. oh, 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 there we go. Oh, 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 please heal. Please oh, heal. There's say, quick attack. Say, please heal. 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 Quick heal. attack. Heal. Quick attack. Heal. Let's if you're listening, never doubt it for a second. Heal. And this <laughs> is heal. why, because Shadow Ball does so much damage. Yeah, heal. so unlike unlike other X items, the X speed takes place after the turn. You use yeah. it. Yeah, or that's at the end a of the Gen turn. 7 thing. It's uh, Gen 8, it's fixed. Um, yeah, Gen 8 this is technically a Gen 7.5. Heal, heal, heal. Okay, yes. let's go. Yes. Okay. yes. <laughs> oh my god. Bless up. Never doubt it. You said that was 10%, right, to, to resist, so power of low? Correct. Uh, so it is a, should yeah. be a 10% chance to live um, and expel any status effects. It's about the same. <sighs> All right. All right we down can, two, uh, more, two more. <laughs> take a breath in between. <laughs> Well that, well, that was a ride. <laughs> but yeah, a great, a great example of why um, 
uh, Etiquette did a bunch of research into this, as you heard, that, like, the Pokemon you want to have as your doubles partner uh, needs to be, what is it, weak to electric? Yep. And um, not weak to poison. That. So, yeah. uh, so pretty much any water type works, also any flying type for the most part. So um, I've been using either Dodrio or Golduck, just depending on the catch route. Um, and unfortunately, Rapid Ash just doesn't work. So you do have to, if you want that like perfectly safe Agatha fight, you do have to swap your Pokemon around a little bit uh, once you get into the Elite Four. Golduck is in fact a fish. So true. <laughs> I just wasn't what thinking if, when I wrote was that. The... <laughs> <laughs> was... This came out of Keys' run, right? Where they were just no. like, yeah, this is a fish. No, I was I was just explaining the strategy in Etchy's Discord the other day, and I was like, you either need a bird like Dodrio or a fish like Golduck. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't think anything of it until somebody commented on it. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Oh, there's like gold duck. <laughs> oh. right, what, you, what is everybody's favorite fish Pokemon? Mine's Starmie. Obviously, gold duck. <laughs> um, I like, like the Palitoad, Pal Pal the Toad one. Palitoad. Yeah, <laughs> oh no, from Gen Five, the the. the oh. Palitoad. I don't know any. Uh, Gen I don't know. Seismitoad. Seismitoad. The Seismitoad. 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 Seismitoad's a good fish. Yeah. Yeah. Can eradicate? That's pretty good. Yes. Yep. I don't think oh Zion will em goodness. emulate you etiquette and trash it right before champ. Is, uh, is Tentacruel a fish? Yep. Yeah, jellyfish. No. Yeah. No, definitely not. No. Terra Water Obama Snow? That's a fish. <laughs> no, Terra Water uh, in Terra Fish. Is, is Tatsugiri a fish? Is that like He's a Jedi Pokemon? It is, yeah. I like caught everything except the stupid hatch rim that I could not find in the overworld. And then I haven't played since. Never is Drifloon a fish? I see it over the water in Legends Arceus all the time. That means Vanilla is a fish too. Mm. Oh, he checks out. Oh, got the Dragonite range. Nice, Very nice. nice range hit. Well, let's go. Yeah, it's, it's super beneficial to two controller lands because even if the Dragonite's a range, uh, you have a free turn to click stomp with the Rapidash. And that's a and Rapidash can outspeed the Dragonite anyways. So it ends up working out. Congrats on no one forgetting Modest, by the way. <laughs> yeah, like anybody's ever done that before in this voice call. Multiple times. <laughs> hey, that's what happens when you start with Pikachu side diploma where you don't get Modest. Because you don't even get a Star B. Yeah! Right, you don't. Well, the rat's coming out. The rat's coming oh, out. Bro. Let's go, Let's rats! Go. Oh, the repel! No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Final fight. Let's do this. Let's go. Champion eleven. Not gonna be champ anymore. <laughs> oh yeah, we never mentioned it, right? This Pidgeot Mega Evolved. It does. And, the, and this is why champion is the champion, because he actually leads his best Pokemon. It's so interesting. Like, this is the only fight I can think of in Pokemon that has the gimmick Pokemon come out first. Like, every other yeah. time... Like, the Mega is the final Pokemon. Even, like, in this game, the other... Like, when you do Elite Four Round 2, they all have a Mega Evolution. Um, But they Can come out last. Live? Oh, my God. Dude, the Rat's a champion. Dude. Although, I hate to say it, but... 
Oh no! Oh <laughs> sevens in chat for this. Will, will Jolteon come out next? No, because uh, this no, because is, it's uh, Raichu. Because it's, it's a Raichu. Oh. Will Raichu come out next? <laughs> uh, I think we'd have a chance to, but at this point it doesn't matter because we're all set up. If what about speed? There's no X speed. The turn one uh, with the double battle, you do X speed and X special. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Zeon's fine. Yeah, this should be mash A and win and change moves on Slowbro, which. Slowbro actually does have a chance of coming out sooner because of the yep. Rapidash. So that is something you have to pay attention to. Yeah, I've seen it I've seen it as early as turn two, and I've still seen it as late as turn six. Yeah. Like normal. Uh it's really weird when it comes out like turn four. And then you have yep. to swap your moves like twice. You're like, oh wait, I'm not mashing A. The Oh here the it is. Out, so here it is. Okay, yeah. Um again. Please Thunderbolt. Fourth. Ah yes. Yes. Perfect. I like missing all the fire blasts here to to ruin the fire blast hit accuracy <laughs> that for the tournament. <laughs> oh, fire blast missed. Add another one. I, I personally was not going to count like hydro pumps like into protect. Oh yeah, absolutely. There was no target. That would feel very unfair. What about the hydro pumps into? Check. What about hydro pumps into like the Cedra? So I so when I was counting my stats, I counted that like my misclicks. I was just like, yeah, I was like, oh, it's like, well, I clicked it and I've done that was like one. And then there was one where, you know, you buffer the input to scald on Caden's Beedrill. Uh, I clicked early and I got a Hydro Pump and I also missed that one. No, no, wait, that wasn't to protect. So I ended up oh. not counting that. Oh, wait, will this mash. be sub? Mash for sub four, mash. It's going to be mash so close. Four. It's going to be close because uh, there's three. There's three party. There are three Pokemon. Oh, yeah, so this should take about a minute six. Um, yeah. Mash, mash, mash. Champion. So this should this should be sub four. Oh, um, that's exciting. Mash. As long as you don't have lazy mashing. The triple PB. The triple. This may also be the first and last time this happens in a in the tournament. Yeah. Yeah. Most likely. I'll try to make you proud tomorrow, and my mom. <laughs> When when is the first race tomorrow? Uh, uh, we're we're going at eleven thirty a.m. Eastern. Okay. Very nice, very nice. You better be work. there. You better be there, Etchy, or we're actually disqualifying your time. Oh, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, All right, it's just that's just working. the rules. Don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> Take attendance at the start of the race. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mash. So time's coming up I here. I think it should be good. Yes, look at this champ, the shiny. Yes. Yes, dude. In there. Oh, this, this is clear. Sub four. Yeah, Give it up so for Zeon. Let's go. Woo. Sub four. All right. Triple PB. So I don't have a PB because my last three runs died to champion, and they were all sub 330 pace. <laughs> oh, man. Uh. Yeah, that's where that joke came from. I stopped running this game because of that. Yeah. <laughs> Understandable. So how about that shiny Radicate? What a hero, right? I, I had to go back for it. and Dude, it was so good. I missed a... Uh, I don't know if anyone caught it. I missed out on a rare candy because my youngest came over and smacked the controller. Oh. So I had to use two on <laughs> Ponyta. So I was a level lower. And then I don't think I've ever had that bad a catch look outside the shiny. Like, nothing would spawn. It was yeah. crazy. What a that was you at the beginning, right? You had, like, controller issues, I saw, right? Yeah, so my second controller connected to my son's Switch. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. So oh, that would, yeah. uh, that would explain something. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, not fun. I had to fix that really quick, but I got it fixed. It did that last night, too, because I was talking to Kid. I'm like, why won't the second trainer come out? And then my son was like, why are you playing my game? <laughs> 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 Um, Zeon, can you go to the race time and finish the race? Uh, oh. It looks like it didn't auto done you, so we'll we'll have to retime. Um, it's most likely close to this three fifty nine fifty three. Judging by go. the other two 
All right, we got it. Thank you. Judging from the other two races, uh, racers, it looks like it's about three seconds off. So this will probably be like a 359.56. Um, but either way, GG's on finishing that run. Congrats on the shiny. Thank you, Etiquette. <laughs> <laughs> I was hyped to see. I, we were in the middle of explaining something, and I was just all of a sudden like, oh my god, there's a shiny. <laughs> <laughs> the, you, you definitely get the biggest distraction from a world record pace run of all time. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo I love the, I love the commentary team. Pokemon, Pokemon. <laughs> Not a Pokemon. <laughs> Not Pokemon. <laughs> that seems to be on par. Uh, for the commentary team. But yeah, to anybody that was just kind of lurking in chat for the last uh, hour or so, uh, just to recap, uh, we do have the, a new world record set in race number one of the tournament on retime. Etchy finished with a 2.59.40, which is a world record by one second. Uh, first to finish... Just already setting the tone for the tournament uh, for this year. And yeah, that is incredible. So congratulations again. Uh, this was a triple PB race. Quo, fin Quo finished with a time of 3.13.46. And Xeon just in that sub four hour mark as well. So congratulations to all of you on a great race. Uh, on some great fun. Because this was honestly amazing to see all three of those perspectives throughout the entirety of the race. Um, any last thoughts from anyone here before we promote our next races coming up this week? Any of the runners? No, I'm good. I wish this was the first time that I lost a race to someone getting the record. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it's the last. other time. What happened? Um, in like 2015, um, I was racing the record holder in Snap, and he also broke the record in a race. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I need a hey, chance. You hear that, everyone? If you want <laughs> yeah. world record, yeah, good luck race quote a tournament. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> tournament. Feels bad. <laughs> you never know. You might get another shot in the next round if, the, if this pans out. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> looking forward to it <laughs> all right um yeah so um great job to all the racers uh we this is just the first of many races of the tournament um we have 13 races here in round one uh here are the upcoming races we've got uh one of your commentators today thomas patrick wx going up against razor's edge and sheepia uh tomorrow at 11 30 eastern um a uh, few hours after that, starting around 3 p.m. Eastern, you've got Ergote against SciJ against Fortunate. Um, that one is going to be on PSR TV too. So if you look at the Twitch channel you're currently looking at and just type a 2 after it, make sure you follow that channel as well because that is where that race will be shown. Um, and then on Sunday, um, or tomorrow Sunday, on Monday at noon Eastern, uh, you'll have Trevaria against Rigby against Furious. Uh, that will be here on TSR TV as well. And yes, I agree with Etchy in the chat. That Triv race does look like it's going to go hard. Uh, Fury, one of the pot three runners that was pot three basically without a PB um, and now has a 313, which would put them solidly in pot two. Uh, so this is probably the race to watch. Um, watch them all, but this one's going to be a close one uh, for They're sure. They're all races to watch. Absolutely. Um, and I guess that's it for me. I don't know. Anyone have anything else they want to say before we sign off for the night? That That's all for me. Just hoping everybody will come back and, uh, yeah, and watch all the runs. Of course, I got the next one, uh, tomorrow. So yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of the tournament, everyone. GG on world record. And thank you for the great commentary. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, thank you for the commentators. It's our pleasure. <laughs> yes. Thanks for the <laughs> thanks for the content. <laughs> yeah, the content. You don't have to listen to what y'all were saying during uh during my run. Sorry for making fun of the fury attack so much. <laughs> also, I I was trying. I etiquette wouldn't say 
the thing that would go wrong in the Jesse James double in Silco, but I just said it anyway. <laughs> All right. Have a good night, everyone.